Welcome, everybody, to the penultimate match of the opening round of the Speed Chess Championship. I'm Grandmaster Robert Hess. Alongside me, my good friend, Grandmaster Maurice Sashi. Maurice, are you ready for this Jan Christoph Duda versus Fabi showdown? Robert, you know, I was born ready. What's up? What's up? We're going to do this. This is going to be fun. Fabi versus Duda. This one should be interesting. I'm hearing some hate for Fabi, but we'll see how the big dog gets it done. You know, he's number two in the world for a reason. He certainly is number two in the world classical chess. This is a blitz format, which hasn't always been his specialty. And as we remind everybody what the format is today, same as usual, it is a single elimination knockout bracket. There will be 90 minutes, an hour and a half of five minute plus one second increment time control chess, followed by an hour of three plus one. And then finally, we get our 30 minutes of bullet, one minute plus one second increment. The action will really heat up. And if a match is tied, we will get four additional bullet matches. That that should favor Jan Christoph Duda. We'll talk about that in a moment. But before we do, Maurice, the prize fund, $32,000 are dished out in the opening round. And that's changed. Yeah, exactly. Cash money, right? 2000 bucks to the winner plus 2000 split by win percentage. And what do you think about that? Because it does motivate people to play every single game. You know, we did the same thing with Clutch Chess to add a little spice to it. It is important. I think the players, sometimes when they get their heads bashed in, it's hard to keep playing. You don't want to play any more games. Please, please, could I resign? Could I be out of here? But, hey, if there's a little bit of extra cash on the line, let's keep playing. Why not motivate them a little bit more? And if uh, they need any more motivation, Wesley So awaits the winner of this match in the quarterfinals of the Speed Chess Championship. And, Maurice, as you look across the bracket, I can't really imagine there are surprises this early, but what do you make of the participants in the uh, quarterfinals? And who do you think is going to win tomorrow's matchup before we get into today's between Anish Giri and Vladislav Artemiev? Well, these are big names in chess. There's no surprises here. They're people who are just animals, sharks. I mean, you look at Levon Aronian, what he did to Nepo. I mean, these are just fantastic players. These are the world's elite. So I think this one is awesome when we get the chance to get down to the next level and the next level and the next level. I got to say, Artemiev is really impressive, man. He's scary. He's scary. Of course, anybody could win the match, but I'd say watch out for him. Okay, I think that's a fair call. Magnus Carlsen really hinted as much, saying that he wants to play the stronger player, was trolling a niche, but it's true. Artemiev is an absolute beast. And, well, those players will be playing tomorrow, but everybody who's watching can get involved today because there is money at stake for our viewers. If you guess the move on chess.com, you have a chance at some prize money. There are grandmasters and other title players taking part in it, but that doesn't mean that they're going to win. And the game that is chosen is not yet selected, so you just have to participate as much as possible and get a chance to win some cash money and you know, bragging rights, some glory. Just guess the move. <laughs> exactly. I wanted you to say that. I didn't want to say it, so I'm glad you took the lead there. And Maurice, now it's time for Jan Christoph Duda versus Fabiano Caruana. You see that their blitz ratings are such that Duda, a bit higher rated, his performance in speed chess championships past is clearly better, and he is predicted to win according to our Smarter Chess predictions brought to us by Chess Goals. I have a problem with this graphic, but I always have problems with smart chess predictions. So, Maurice, what do you think about this? I mean, 77%. Now, the number two player in the world is going to get mauled. I mean, that just seems a, a bit outrageous. I get it. It looks as though he's skewing high in the bullet portion, where you really have to be somebody who plays a lot of bullet over and over and over again. Uh, to really get it, but geez, to just see Fabi getting this kind of disrespect, I mean, uh, maybe 60 40, but 77 23, that's just a blowout. No love at all. I, I think it's preposterous. I'm pretty upset about it, but I understand it at the same time. Fabi has not proven historically to be the best online speed chess player. That said, during this unfortunate pandemic, he clearly has improved his game all the various events that he has taken part in has shown that he is a promising blitz player these days. And I think that it will be much closer than that prediction indicates seven to three in bullet. What is a one second increment, not buying it, not today, but Maurice, Robert, 
You know? I'll add as well, there's no category that he's been giving any edge. Like, <laughs> zero category. Like, no love for him in any category. That's I, I, If Bobby C has known this number beforehand, if he knows it, he's got to be really ticked off <laughs> and, take it, and ready to take this personally, try to take Duda down and prove the world wrong. Well, we're going to have him try to prove that in just a moment because the game should start any second now. And, yeah, M Maurice... I can't get over that. I mean, no advantages whatsoever, but let's see if he can create an advantage over the board. We do have lift off and, oh, the French. Don't do this to me, Maurice. Oh, I can't handle it. <laughs> <laughs> Hating on the French, but Fabi is no doubt going to try to surprise his opponent with some different ideas. Both of them looking sharp, fresh, by the way. You see that they're all cleaned up. Fabi's hair is significantly shorter than in the, the promo pick. So... Mm -hmm. We'll see if that's because he's ready to, to play some fresh moves on the board. This French, I'm not a fan. I don't like having my bishop stuck on C8 and crammed and try to break out of a structure when White has all the space. Yeah, but Fabi has been known to play it before, and it's a very complex position. Yeah, it's funny because I've seen Fabi crush opponents on the white side of Frenches in U.S. championships past in particular. And this bishop on C8, it's typically a horrendous piece. But why is Duda spending some time here? Like, why did he take so long before playing Bishop E2? This is still mainline theory. I guess he was choosing, do I want to castle queenside or kingside? Well, he knows Fabi did not just drop this on the board out of the sky. I mean, Fabi has prepared this specifically for this match. He's thought about it carefully. He's one of the best prepared players on the planet. If anything, you'll say Fabi's main strength is his preparation, his opening ideas that he's going to come with to beat you down. So clearly... Duda wants to get into something a little bit different, maybe not the most popular position, and maybe not the sharpest lines that Fabi has analyzed in depth to the finish. Yeah, and there are possibilities to exchange a lot of pieces on the D4 square, which I'm highlighting here. And perhaps that's what Fabi wants in game one, is an end game, something that isn't too sharp, because in a lot of positions, White can try to blast through with F5, but not happening when D4 and then E5 will collapse. So he is preventing the more aggressive plans. And now Duda is spending even more time. Are we sure that Duda is going to be the favorite in this match? Based on the early clock usage, as you said, Maurice, preparation favoring Fabiano. Yes, indeed. And that's a lot of time to be burning right now. Is it move 12 or something? I mean, this is, this is crazy that this much thought went into this early a position. And finally, he did capture on the C5 square. We'll see more trades occur without a doubt. Uh, the dark square bishops will be coming off the board without any question. And there we go. And you got to say, Fabi for the clock, as far, as far as this position is concerned, not only that, I don't see the domination by white here. It seems as though D4 will happen very soon for black. Can he do it even now, Robert? Can, can he drop in a D4 move? Uh, you is, can def it, definitely, right? Because if D4, and if you take with the knight, there's going to be a quick rook B8, but he plays bishop B7 first. So yeah, that, that, that's a little surprising to me. I would have loved to put a pawn on D4 and also chase the, the knight that's on C3 to a weird circuit. Yeah, but let's take a look at that. We'll bring up the analysis board here just to go back a move here because D4, Maurice's idea is kick this knight, and if the knight captures on D4, here comes a rook D8, and that's a devastating that's pin. That's absolutely wins. deadly. And, and where would the knight on C3 go before this? This is my key point. He'd have to play knight D1 and send it over to F2, et cetera. But what, what do we hate on this? Put our bishop on B7, put a rook on the D line, and it's party all day. I'm surprised that he didn't go for this line. He played bishop B7 instead, and bishop D3 came immediately. And now the question after D4 is, can he just play knight E4 and say, hey, thanks, no problem. You let my knight get to a decent square. So a little bit problematic in my mind by Fabi, and now he spent uh, some time before finally playing rook A D8 and looking again to maybe playing D4 in the future, seems like he missed the opportunity just a second before. I'm with you, Maurice, because uh, now if he puts his pawn on D4, he's probably worried about the eventual end game. Has that pawn gone too far and becoming a weakness rather than a potential strength? And Queen F2 played, pinning this knight on C5 and covering the D4 square a little more. I and also was threatening. <laughs> also was threatening the blast, Bishop A7 check, and finish you off. So yeah, good point. He sticks to deal with that. Uh, that's a very good point. That's why h6 was played because of that 
typical sacrifice. You make some move like rook d7, in comes the sacrifice, queen h4, knight g5, queen h7, all happening very quickly. So instead, we got h6, stopping all of that at once. No knight g5, no bishop sacrifices. Uh, but I am surprised, Maurice, and we have been talking about it, but the fact that he didn't play d4, what do you think that says about Fabi more generally? Or are we reading too much into it if we start speculating? Let's just say he missed it. Let's just say he missed that chance for now, and that's all. Let's, they're both warming up. Duda not playing with his normal alacrity. He's down at 211 right now. Uh, Fabi also maybe not finding all the nuances instantly or that opportunity when it knocks. But it could be a big deal, guys, a big deal, because now Duda has all this space, Robert. D4 doesn't make any sense at all now. Zero sense. Forget it. Nope. Fabi, Fabi has got to look for a play from somewhere. The threat is rook to e1, rook a e1, followed by f5, and blast away. Where is Black's counterplay? I'm not seeing it, right? That's the big problem is once that knight got kicked back to d7 and then white's queen swung into the action here, it feels like white has a very free hand. And normally you make moves like f6, the typical move to play in the French to chisel out white structure, but that's too weakening. Look at these light squares that are going to be penetrated by white's pieces. So, I mean, I, I'm just not seeing an easy move for Fabi. And now Neither the clock he. situation. Look at that. It's heating up. You made the point. You made a great point. The clock situation is indicative of the fact that Black has gotten a worse version of the French than you want to have. You want some play. You want to move. And now he has played F6 because what else is there to do, Robert? The Black is stuck for a plan. Black had no normal peace moves. Pawn breaks, A5, who cares? You're about to get killed on the king side. He had to do something to compete with the attack on this side of the board. Yeah, so he plays f6, and at the very least, White can capture on f6, bring that rook a to e1 that you suggested, and e6 becoming a quick target. But, ooh, the evaluation bar did not like the capture on f6. And, okay, it's swinging back and forth, a bit uncertain about the longer-term prospects of this, but I see that pawn e6, Maurice. I'm not liking that. Well, there's going to have to be some kind of tricky tactic somewhere. I think that a an e5 move by Black's going to have to come with some weirdness. The problem I have for Black's position right now is that knight on c6 and that bishop on b7. These pieces have to breathe somehow. How are they going to get in the game? Can he play maybe knight e7 to f5, Robert, and hope for rain in a line like that? I pray that you don't get killed. Maybe <laughs> that's the best thing to do because those pieces now are just con highly congested on that side of the board. And unless you can find a break like E5, I mean, you can't play it. You, you can't play it. You've got to go for a, this night move somewhere, either D4 or E7, and pray you're not dying on the spot. Yeah, Knight D4 is an interesting one, trading off some of the pieces and avoiding maybe a more menacing attack. But this, what I'm having trouble with, Maurice, here is that even if you – fend off the attack, there's still some positional weaknesses, in particular this pawn on e6, but I like your idea, your more general approach of saying, I need to open up the bishop, my knight on c6 isn't doing so much, so let me make a move like knight d4 to trade off what could be a very aggressive piece, piece because knight g5, in many variations, is a threat, going after e6 and saying, haha, you can't take me, because my bishop and queen will line up on the h7 square, so... I, I do like your knight d4 move just to get rid of some of the attackers. But, but Robert, is it a stone cold blunder? Because Fabi's sitting here 30, 40, maybe it's been a minute already that he's sitting on this position, ticking down to 106. Remember that gigantic edge he had on the clock? And finally, he's doubled rooks. But, you know, you, you got to double rooks quickly. And f5 on the board, knight to e8, now backing up, hoping against hope as his pieces have become really weird even more weird we had a knight possibility of being on d4 now it's on d8 and with the f5 break white pieces are breathing I, i'm not feeling this position at all but maybe he's still okay maybe his bishop on b7 is holding things together on the square d5 yeah that's important and i like how duda is transferring his advantage because the pawn e6 was backward and weak a target but he's saying let me play f5 and take and then give black an isolated pawn but at the same time as you're highlighting it frees up black's pieces this knight coming e6 he pre-moved that now this knight from c6 to e6 that's close to the king side it can go to f4 eventually don't drop your knight on d7 if that knight moves out the way and queen d6 it feels like fabi has completely regrouped at this stage and the clock it's been telling the story of the game race 33 seconds and counting down for duda 
this is what Fabi was counting on, these complex franchises. And remember, we said we wanted to see the move E5 happen. Well, it was ordered in order to remove that weakness, break open the game and give Black some room. But F5 has done for Black what E5 himself would have done in a position like that. And the game is open. Black's pieces are much more coordinated right now. And this move, Knight to D1, Robert, that's not saying anything. Bobby just needs to start pressing forward and do it quickly. Knight at four, boss move. This is starting to look really good for Black. I'm looking at your D4 move now. Open that bishop up, attack the knight on E3. He's, go he's probably going for it because the knight can't get to F5. So D4 simply kicks the knight back. I guess it hangs the pawn, but there's so many tactics available that rook F4 first. That's, that's Great start. Smart. Great start. And this is all Fabi now. 12 seconds left for Duda, and he has no pieces to, to talk about. When his queen moves, D4 is going to happen. He's just played queen G3. D4 on the board. He's got six seconds, and he's got to figure out what to do. He's got to make a move bishop right takes now. Bishop takes F3 works because if Rook takes F3, then you can sacrifice your queen for a back rank checkmate. But he's, he's going for the same idea, knight E5. Piling up the pressure here. Is there Rook G4? Can that do the trick? Yes, sure. Rook G4 looks great right now. There Why it not? is. Rook yeah, G4 rook looks like queen a affair. killer move. And he can take with the queen and G2 is hanging. And now he's just sacrificing his queen, uh, admitting this position is busted. Now Fabi just has to get the job done with 20 seconds left, two seconds for Duda, threats are going to start hovering. The Knights are hoping that somehow they can hold it together, but nope. Queen C1, give me a piece. Fabi gets it done in the first game with Black from an inferior position. He does, and we'll pull up the um, analysis board really quickly because I want to show something that Fabi did, which was excellent. Uh, at this moment, when the Rook captured on F8 on move 30, a lot of people say, I need to keep my knight protected. It's all under attack, but you're losing that piece anyway. And much more important is keeping your king safe. And then so you can take on G2. So taking with the king, that reflex was really smart. Uh, sorry, not taking with the king. So you taking with the queen was really smart by Fabi because getting the king there allows a check and maybe some defense. Queen takes as you're losing G2 by force. And that's that. So Indeed, uh, that was certainly a fantastic performance there by Fabi and he, he needed that win to start to quiet the haters, quiet the haters who say he's going to get blasted. If he keeps playing like this, all right, let's be real, though. That was an uneven game on both their parts. Duda needs to get into this match and start to, start to play with some speed, first of all. Don't get behind the way he did on the clock initially. I mean, that was crazy. Like, right out of the opening? Remember he was, how long he spent on deciding to play Bishop E2, as you mentioned? You cannot afford to do that in these matches. Certainly not, because he could have used that time towards the uh, end of the game. And, oh, I see what just happened here. And the evaluation bar is always telling. It was at minus something, minus almost one, and then it went down to slightly better for white, which means queen e6 probably was the trick, hitting both pawns at the same time. And actually, there's no real way for white to protect both, because queen d3 runs into knight e5. So you protect e4 and c4 at once, but I immediately kick you out the way. So queen e6, Maurice, that looks like a missed opportunity. Did Duda think that maybe there was a, a trick, a trap, a preparation by Fabi waiting in the position? We know Fabi is famous for dropping little nuances there, but it looks good to me. We'll see whether or not they go back in this line. Uh, if Fabi repeats it, it means that he's confident that he did have a trick. If not, then he would say, oh, wait a minute, <laughs> I think I messed up my <laughs> preparation there. The guy could have played queen e6. So we'll see. These matches, we get to see a lot of games. It, you're going to see the theory repeated again and again. They, they can't play new positions every single time. Certainly not. And I do think that queen e6 is a move you almost never play, right? So trying to say, oh, queen e6 here makes sense, you're much more likely to just play your typical stuff because the queen on d8 is a good square. It defends e7 in the event, oops, excuse me, in the event of any kind of knight d5, and it also can allow the queen to go over towards the queen side and be useful there. So it's uh, a good square to have the queen on more generally in these Meroxy bind structures. But the bind is over, Maurice. The pawns well, are traded on d5. Yes, indeed. And the point you make is such a good point. The knight on d5 also often threatens to go to b6, forking anything that's sitting if there's a rook on eight when the queen's on d7 everybody's getting forked by knight b6 but the queen on d8 and now the rook on b8 there is no knight b6 that's just history and nothing for black to worry about and as you said the bind is gone usually when the bind leaves especially the king still on g1 and the pawn on h3 robert uh, who who's worried if you got the black pieces certainly not me i'm with you i, I could tell by the way you're saying it that black position looks good and I, i'm here with you and actually that was a great 
point by you about the b6 square because knight d5 if that queen were on d7 there would be immediate problems but here you could probably play the move e6 and say what now the b6 square is covered no issues in black's position trading off pieces so that's why um fabi dropped his knight back rook a8 and okay that pawn a2 not exactly happy but how did it make progress here? Because it seems like white's going to play rook c2, rook c1, and take over this open c file. So I kind of like white's position from a, a concrete point of view, but from a like the thought process of my rook on a8's powerful, that is the only thing I'm going for, the bishop on g7, the rook on a8, but that's not actually accomplishing all that much right now. I'm going to say that the move rook a8 actually is not an impressive move to me because the knight on c6 is now tethered to the b4 pawn. And so by moving your rook away and letting white consolidate with the move b3 and, and also guarding the c4 square, white was going to do that anyway, right? White was just going to do that anyway. So now you've created a situation where your knight on c6 has to sit there pretty much forever unless you defend that sucker again with somebody else. The rook was taking care of the, the job of guarding that pawn. You could have played rook a at any time you wanted to, and he would have played b3 anyway. So I, I'm a little bit... I feel like it was a slightly inaccurate move, and maybe this knight should have found e5 and play in that fashion. Even here, you might want to play something like a knight e5 at some point, looking at the d3 square in the long run. But you can't move it. Like, you just can't move it. So now white has just piled up on the c line, and black is checking out, like, what should he do? Well, how do you, how do you clarify the situation on the board? That's a, an excellent point that rookie had that one move threat. The pawn was under attack, but white's very obvious reply helped the case for Fabiano. So uh, here black does feel a bit stuck. So let's try to answer that question. How do you defend B4 in a meaningful way? Is white ready to take on C5? Because that is a hanging pawn. So if white wants to, you can take on C5, give up your Bishop and say a pawn is a pawn. And right and now D5. Sorry, Robert. Knight D5 was a threat as well. Mm -hmm. Knight d5, going after the pawn on, on b, b4, uh, four. and also the knight b6 idea with the rook on b8, on, on b8 was guarding it, the rook on a8, now your queen can't leave. So that, that idea came back and he said, wait, I can't move my queen, I can't do anything, I need to play the move e6 to stop the knight from going to d5, and now that has also weakened the d6 pawn. It certainly has, and I probably would not capture on c5. It's a way to just steal a pawn in the initial position, but that makes a2 loose, and it's an unopposed dark square bishop. A move I would consider, though, is knight d3, but instead he focuses his energy on the d6 pawn right away. Is he just going to scoop that off? If you give him the opportunity, he certainly would like to. And I guess black should make a move like bishop e5 to defend while putting the bishop in a more aggressive square. Robert, the challenge here for Black is to find the concrete plan that maneuvers the pieces in just the right way. That's going to be the challenge. White, I think, should move the king off of G1, and there's a, the bishop move. And it, this is exposing the pieces. You know, that, that bishop is a problem. The knight on C5 is a problem. The pawn on D6 is the only thing that's helping it. This is a, a just a second moment where Blackwell looks like he has to, has to play. Knight takes d3. I'm not really sure why he's taking so long. Do you see another move? It looks like, it looks like it's forced. Maybe he was he, trying to make the follow-up as quickly as possible. So he was spending his time on the second move rather than on knight takes d3, which I agree, that was the very obvious move. And the opportunity that I mentioned to get the knight off of c6 finally when the b4 pawn's not hanging. This was a very critical moment for Black right now. Now, that bishop on e5 looks like it should be getting kicked with f4. I'm not sure why, why you'd hesitate there either. It's not like your e4 pawn is going to come under fire. So f4 seems natural, Robert. Why would Fabi wait here? I guess there's the decision to be made about the stare down the c-file because I could take on c2, which relieves the pressure on d6 and also removes a very important defender in the long run on this pawn a2. But if you take on c8, maybe this knight can even capture it to get passive for the time being. But again, a2 is a problem that white needs to keep an eye on himself. So f4, definitely, that's the idea I'm looking to play as well. But making it all work is a little bit more difficult, it seems. All right, well, the knight did take on C8. The D6 pawn is guarded forever now. It is not going to be a target. You've got to hope your, maybe your light square pressure will be a factor. I, I got to tell you, I wasn't really a fan of this move rook takes. And again, you see black now playing the move queen A5, hitting the A pawn, guarding the B4 point. No kind of pressure on this pawn 
on D6. Oh, don't take on A2, Fabi with a trick. Ah, don't touch that. You, you would certainly lose instantly to Rook C8 as the Rook would be overworked. And you know what's an idea here, Maurice, is A4. Because with this knight needing the Rook's defense, a move like A4 could be possible trying to take advantage of an overworked Rook. So that's a big decision now for JKD is, hey, A4 would close the A file and then make B4 even look worse. So he needs to figure out a way to stop that move from being played. He could play King G7, but Bishop H6 chases him back. Mm -hmm. And that's so he cannot do that for that Wait. reason. But now he's played this move. A4. Take advantage of the pin pawn. But also, this is a pawn sack. Well, not quite. This is a very touch-and-go move he just played. F4 followed by queen takes D6 is playable, but you hang B2. Is, I mean, A2, I mean, is that, hmm, no, A4 may be the way, the positional way to handle it, as you said. Guard B5, the knight has no path into the game, and you keep all your threats. I like it. And there it is. And the point is after B takes A3 en passant, that drops the queen because the rook no longer defends it. So we will not be seeing that en passant move, that's for sure. And that was still a move even with the knight back on C8. We'll go back a quick second here. Let's say you played a move like H5, A4 is possible because it takes en passant. There's rook takes C8 with check. The rook is overworked, protecting the knight and protecting the queen. So that tactic was available whether the knight went to A7 or remained on C8. But after A4 here... JKD deep in the think tank plays queen a6, but Maurice, it's very clear that white's position has improved. And importantly, his pawn on f3 still makes his center feel strong here. So he didn't even have to commit himself to anything, Fabi. Not yet. Yeah. I think he will eventually because black's bishop is just too strong holding that square. Now the rook back to b8, a rook that should never have left the b8 square, in my opinion. And only 16 seconds left in this position, 35 for Fabi. Fabi just needs to find a couple of improving moves at the moment, keep the pressure on his opponent. Is there a threat for black? None that we can spot. Maybe the D5 move is something he was hoping for, but he needs to make moves quickly now, as does Fabi. How does he improve, get some pressure? F4 finally in the position, and knight back to F3. Here mm -hmm. we go. You can just take that if you want it because you can't take with the queen. The queen is stuck defending this knight in A7. You've given black an isolate on F5, crashing Woo! through. This is it. This is beastie play by Fabi now completely outplaying his opponent world-class chess as those pawns are split all the pawns in black's position are split every which way there's got to be multiple ways to win this position but he's got to do it quickly he himself only has 12 seconds left and here comes queen h7 with bishop c5 to follow in fact bishop c5 instead of bishop f2 is probably stronger but here it comes bishop c5 pinning the knight rook f1 maybe here it comes oh yeah everything is a threat right now and i think probably just <laughs> <laughs> Dropping your queen back, yum, yum, <laughs> snacking on something. And now he's found the killer blow. Bishop d6 followed by rook f7. Hello, that's it. No, no mas, no mas, no mas. Fabiano Caruana rolling right now. Oh, he is. And that was a nice way to finish that game. We'll bring up the board one more time very quickly to show how he broke through. And it's in some ways JKD asked for it by playing d5 himself towards the end there. Because by playing d5, he got rid of his defenders on the f5 square but that's happening regardless so take takes an f5 crashing through very quickly mm. black's pieces over over on the queen side not helping this poor king on g8 and the rest was very simple for bobby crashing through here so pure class robert that was pure class chess right there held the tension Man. and then broke through when his opponent made the critical error fantastic play so far by fabi and it feels like he's warming up as well that's the other thing. It feels like he hasn't played his best chess yet. Is that scary to say? Because he seems like he's getting in a groove. Dude, I better find something quickly or else this match, he, oh, I'm not going to say it could be over. There is a lot of bullet to play. So a lot of games, but man, Fabi on a roll right now. And look at this game, Maurice. He learned from his first game, I guess. He played B4 first instead of putting the queen on B6. And after B4, knight D1, A5. So he simply expanded over here on the queen side. And that's what white... Uh, you know, white goes for the king side, black goes for the queen side. It's kind of the point. C4. Am I am I seeing this? Is this real? You can play C4. That's uh, mm, okay. <laughs> That's not what they teach you in the classical manuals, Robert. You're supposed to be going for F5, not attacking on the same side as your opponent is. To play such a move just seems like it should not work out. Is there a D5 sighting right now? Is that some kind of madness? I, I don't think that could 
possibly work. And if it doesn't, then Black simply captures on D4 and then puts his bishop on B7 and says, thanks for freeing my one bad piece that I've been crying about. What is this? I don't know. And he's spending so much time here that I'm having a hard time figuring it out because knight B6 heading to D5 as well. It's not just the diagonal. You've given black the D5 square. There's a pawn there, both blocking the bishop and taking it away from black's pieces. So I don't like this at all for young Christoph Duda. The engine, the evaluation bar, clearly slightly favoring Fabiano. And the lead on the scoreboard, 2 nothing. Smarter chess, where are you at? Where are you at with that 78% or whatever it was? In- There's a long way to go, Robert. Let's not speak too early <laughs> still, but I agree. Two zip the start and two classy games as well. Not like, oh, the guy blundered. And we see their quiet move by, by Fabi. Maybe your knight b6 was a bit more, a little, had a little bit more oomph to it. But bishop b7, you can't hate him for trying to get his bishop on a sweet diagonal. Look at that bishop just slicing down. And this may be the time for white to play d5. You're pointing out the bishop is looking nice and strong there. So playing d5 can close the diagonal and force black to capture there because d5, e takes d5, bishop takes d5. Maybe my bishop can sit on e4 where it's challenging yours on this nicely open long diagonal. Of course, black can just play knight b6 and into c4. So not that great for white. I totally agree. This this is a challenge. But knight b6, as you said, knight b6 is coming on the next move, and no problem there. And it, and it looks like we are seeing the position. Robert, you called it. Now, we do have a, an imbalance, and it is dynamic, in fact. White has freed his pawns. Maybe your knight b6 earlier, like I said, instead of the bishop b7 move, would have been far more pressing more to the point. But now white is thinking, dreaming one day, please let me play F5, F6. Let me keep queens on as well. Could I keep the queens on? Fabi said, no, 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 no. That's, that's what happens <laughs> when you start threatening me. We trade queens off, make sure that cannot happen. But the problem for black at the moment is that bishop on B7, although it's solid, although it's good, it's, faced, it's being faced off by this bishop on E4. So white got to sneak that in. Can Black make some moves, get a knight maybe on c4 at some point? How does he chase away this bishop over the e4 square? That said, Robert, you can't like White's pieces. They look silly. Other than the bishop on e4, everybody else looks silly. But there are prospects, right? Because it's pawn c5, we have to take into account that there's an extra pawn for both sides and different sides of the board, right? From the e through the h file, White has an extra pawn. From the a through c files, Black has an extra pawn. That typically favors the extra pawn on the queen side in the end game. Because look at how far this king on h1 is from Black's extra pawn. Whereas White's extra pawn, e5, this king is super close. So just to think about that as we may see some trades in the future. And as you were pointing out, Maurice, Black's pieces are definitely better placed. The bishop on d2 doing a whole lot of nothing. The knight on e3 would love to jump into f5 but then the question is then what right you get to f5 great you attack my bishop i can move my bishop away you're not really making the progress you so desire and on the other side of things black's pieces are ready to just jump into the action robert i want to play knight f5 and then when you move your bishop play queen g4 where's <laughs> my queen i mean that's what you do when you have the space on the king side to attack with the reality is with this pawn formation you're going to need and before i could even finish the thought you're going to need to play f5 and e6, creating mm-hmm. your own pass pawn. He just played the move g6, saying, you want to try that? Go right ahead. There's no knight to f5. Nothing. There's no, there's no nothing over there. If I'm going to use a double negative and piss off my English teacher from grade school, <laughs> there's, not, there's no nada on that side of the board for white. White has to be thinking, how do I settle down black? Because black is looking at moves like c4, like you said starting to get some some angles and might even play a bishop d3. Black has all kinds of options. In fact, it's probably the problem for black is how many moves does black have? Is there a knight a4 sighting? And oh man, that's a little bit too too much maybe. Now I'm liking c4 eventually with, with the possibility of, of more pressure in the position and white just looking for things to do. Can't find any moves. I'm talking all this time, Robert. The guy's losing the same amount of time on the clock. Yes, you're absolutely right, Maurice. And if you 
you're kind of highlighting this, but the squares. Black has d5 under control, which is what white's pieces want to go to. f5, we we're looking at that square. Nope, not for you. Whereas d3, you could put that bishop in, double the rooks, bring the next one over. It just feels like black dominates the control of this board here. And knight g4? Are you really trying to go knight f6? I can just take you there, right? And thank you very much. You moved your knight away. Thank you. Here's an attack on both bishop and pawn on b2. This just is getting from bad to worse for what? That last move was not it. Knight g4 was just a, a drop. I just need to make a move. My time is ticking. I've got to do something. It would have been better to play the move h3 or king g1. But knight g4, there's no threat. You're, you left control of the c4 square and allowed a knight to park itself on c4. Now it's up to Fabi. Fabi wants to find something nasty right now. Is it a4? Mm, I wanted to play a4 with the idea of playing b3, but he, the opponent, he does have the move b3 himself, so that's a little bit tricky. What's the way to, to amp up the pressure in this position? I don't quite see it. Is it h5 chasing him back? No, knight d4 finally just putting the knight on a central square and chasing him backwards. And as you said, Robert, he could double on the d-line. Yeah, he's just saying, I don't mind the trade because your bishop still can't go anywhere and let me go rook d1 next if you're not careful. And rook takes e4 was a, an immediate threat. It was an immediate threat indeed. Knight back, guarding knight. everything. There's no bishop h4 trickery. I want to force g3, but I want to do it if I could play bishop somewhere else afterwards. Just to, just to lighten up that diagonal for some tactics with rook e4 later. But no, if only if my bishop could go to a great square on the next move, but I want to waste this tempo in this way because I don't want white to have a free move after this. So the real threat, it looks like, is going to be b3, Robert. Where is the knight going to go? Maybe you should play a4 now, and if b3, take and then play knight back to a5. I'm with you there. It softens up the square. You're going to just go, go right after this pawn. In many of these positions, you can even sacrifice an exchange as long as you get this pawn. So I, I see that the Eva bar doesn't look... Oh, my gosh. Knight d2. Knight d2. In we go. Let, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll take back my a4 and say uh, he should play knight d2. I mean, <laughs> knights normally don't land on the seventh rank, your opponent's second rank, like this, just to park themselves there. But, oh, man, this guy has got valet parking on the D2 square right now. Look at that beast hitting the bishop and prepping everything else. I mean, also, by the way, opening the diagonal for his bishop on A6, the square control is marvelous. I mean, geez, this is terrible. Where's the bishop going to go? And, you know, Maurice, we were focusing on A4, B3. You can even play C4, B3 if uh, White allowed it. But oh, this is... He no, had to is... take. He had to take or put his bishop on C6 would have been atrocious. And now there's going to be tactics. There's going to be tactics in a position like this one. But in the meantime, C4, more board control. Man, Fabi is playing like a beast. I mean, geez, leave the guy alone, Fabi. <laughs> Look at these moves he's dropping on him. And now the question is, what's the killer blow? The, the knight on f2 looks tenderoni. B3 looks... I mean, that just looks like it, doesn't, right? Doesn't that look like it? B3 yeah. looks winning. You just play B3, kick the rook, and then if the rook trades, the second one comes down, hitting... Okay, he just wants it all. Look at the guy. A4. <laughs> More <laughs> domination. Make a move and your opponent doesn't even know what you're threatening necessarily. Can he play knight e4 now? I mean, he, he's got to make a move. Yeah. He's only got 20 seconds left. He's being completely owned. And 94 was totally forced. And here comes those pawns. There's going to be a passer oh, real soon. Look at this. In comes A3 next. And the bishops with the pass pawn. That's just game over. And what a gorgeous, game by Fabi. Gorgeous chess. Dominant chess. Amazing play. Wow. This is, this is, Eight. oh, no. This has got to be over. By the way, Bishop, Bishop B7 forces you to go all the way back home. Mm -hmm. because of a tactic and a3 is going to happen anyway he's calculating a3 but he only has 20 seconds left so he's got to find the right path here and he did finally play it forcing that piece back and what's what would be wrong with a3 he's decided nah you know what i'm gonna snack i'm gonna go why don't you play a3 right well, a3 now, is just winning a3 was a3 is winning right now same thing play it, b2 Bobby, and play already b2 and the guy's gonna be tied down for the rest of all time, and also, as you said, rook c4 is coming with rook c1. Oh, it's over. Yep, it's completely. Bishop c5 for good measure now, if you want it. Rook c4, of course, is just rook c1 next. Rook c1. And bishop c5 and at the end. Bishop d3 holds b1. Oh, my gosh. You wanted to see it. I know you. 
I can I see it was hurting you that he didn't actually play it. You wanted to see the move on the board. Show it, Robert. Show it to the fans so they can appreciate that finish. Bishop d3 trying to hold, but no. Bishop c5, and that's it. Rook f1 met by a simple trade on f1, and then queening. 3-0 to start. This is just a straight beat. I told you he hadn't played his best chess yet. Did I say he hadn't played his best chess yet? He was up 2-0, Robert, and he hadn't played his best chess yet. That right there was a master class. That was a master class. What play by Fabi from start to finish, just in flow. Three zip. Wow. And that's the problem, Maurice, is when you're playing somebody as strong as Fabiano and you give him that confidence, we know he has not always been the finest speed chess player in the world. But right now, this guy looks unbeatable. He has made almost no mistakes, with the exception of that first game, when he didn't play D4 as black. We both were critical of it, and deservedly so. But since then, it's been all Fabiano the entire way. And in Duda shoes now, all right, we got guys a cla world-class player. He's 3,000 rated in, <laughs> in Blitz for a reason. He's got to stop the bleeding. We've seen this happen time and time again. He's got to stop the bleeding right now. Get first of all, he's got to speed up. But I mean, look at it, look at him. He, the way he's wipe, wiping his his face, holding his brow. He's like, "Yo, I'm getting hit. <laughs> I'm getting hit. You need to stop the bleeding quickly. Get a solid position. Trade off some pieces. Get a draw, and maybe make another one, and then start playing chess. Because right now, if he keeps playing and if, if, he, if he gets highly aggressive, trying to get those points back right away, Robert, he could be down four, five, nothing." And the match may be just over. Well, not if uh, Smarter Chess's bullet predictions come true with a 7-3 advantage for Duda. And I love just arguing with Smarter Chess predictions. It's like my favorite thing to do. And as you see on the screen, 77% favorite, winning 5-4 in the five minute. I don't think so. 5-4 in this time control, 3 nothing. Mm, Fabiano right now. That prediction's already off. That yeah. prediction we can already throw out the window. He would have to win the next three for us to start saying it's possible. It's, you know, it, it, it's theoretically, but, but like, even in this position, uh, I'm sorry, but already I like white. <laughs> yeah. You tell me you don't like the bishop pair because the bishop on f6 isn't the most dominant bishop you've ever seen? Mm, <laughs> well, well, you know, I'm just going to say I like white. How does white now build on this position, positional advantage that he has? And again, he's got to get back in business on the clock does Duda, he cannot keep being worse on the clock. Just You just can't. And Fabi now just playing straightforward chess, taking and saying, I got to double pawns. Let me go after your F6 pawn. Now, this kind of play, it, it, it's typical. It's classical play against weaknesses. But Black has shown that in these kind of Shreshnikov structures, it's not necessarily that easy to crack Black's king side. So I'm not sure Knight F6 was the best way to play in this position, as I don't see White's natural follow-up. And the threat of D5 for Black will be in the position, as well as Knight B4 and a Rook on the C line. So the Queen leaving in this way after Knight F6, Queen H6, Robert, I got to say, I felt like that exchange and maneuver may not have been the best for Black. For, yeah, let's, for, we'll pull up the Bobby analysis board to, uh, to demonstrate that. I'm with you, Maurice, because the bind was more important to me than the double pawns. Yeah, you give Black these double pawns, makes the king look less safe, but you have to prove it, whereas the knight is doing a great job just saying, you're restricted completely. This knight before idea that Maurice is mentioning, not available. And I can take you on f6 when I want to. You do not want to take on d5. That would be a choice that gives white complete control because of this backward pawn and this bad bishop on f6. So I'm totally there with you, Maurice, that taking on f6, it felt like it relieves the pressure that Black was under, unless Fabi can prove it directly with f4 and i guess he's trying to play f5 g4 g5 and crash through so you believe if you're white that you are not going to face any counterplay by the way i don't understand why king h8 i would have been aiming i mean he's decided to cover up on on the side of the board where white is attacking what is duda doing you just he just sees the defensive we were talking about the counterplay on the other side you should have been thinking rook c8, knight b4. If you're going to take on the on the b3 square, you know, let okay, you're going to do it anyway, so let it play as f5 move. But right now, this last maneuver, I am not feeling. I think he thought he would be getting play. Maybe, 
shouldn't Fabio have been sacrificing in that last? I, I don't know. I was thinking about being able to play for Bishop, attack Rook, and then pawn. But now that I'm thinking about it, there's a Queen F8 defense that, no, Queen F8 is not a defense because a Queen F6. So I don't know. It, it felt like there was a sacrifice in there, Robert. Now Black seems to have pushed White back at least a little bit here. Although yeah. I do feel like playing C3 and sacking my B pawn. I'm with you. C3 looks really strong to kick this knight and give up the B pawn. I'm going to go back to that moment just because we uh, have the analysis board option. You wanted to kick this rook, right, with some kind of like bishop h3 and then just play g4, g5? And it looks I actually wanted to play bishop to e2, but I'd have to, I'd have to work again with the next tempo. So right. this, this is probably, I mean, this is what I wanted to do. I didn't want to just put my bishop on h3. But now that, I, now that that's clear, let's play bishop h3 and play g4 and ask, what was Black's next move against this? Very direct demonstration. f6 is hanging. Maybe he could wait until g5 and then take and play for, I don't know. It just felt like Black, white would naturally do this to get compensation. But it is a sacrifice. It is your center pawn. It's not, it's, it's Fabi's center pawn, not mine. So he's like, no, nah, I'm not sacking it. I'll get it later. I'll get an idea like this in time although I'm, I'm with you i mean this attack looks very strong but fabi saying hey those are not your pieces guys you can sacrifice them but i have to pay the price if i <laughs> That's do right when it's your <laughs> game you sack them in the meantime he doesn't have to rush i mean he can just wait here you see him just saying let me be patient let me develop the strengths of my position and sooner or later i'm going to play the move c3 trust me i'm going to kick that one out then i'm going to play bishop to e2 and i'm going to kick that work out then i'm going to play g4 and the queen on c7 that that's not an attacking queen. That queen's going to have to go back to e7 when queen h6 lands on the board. Queen h6, don't think your queen is roaming. Your queen's not going anywhere. This is, you know, this is not Sprint and Verizon. You're not roaming. There's, there's, <laughs> there's going to be charges to the roaming because the queen h6, the pawn on f6 will be untenable. And so the queen has to stick around because of that tactic. That's uh, an exceptional point, Maurice. The queen coming back to h6 will force queen e7. So we know that we can get a position with the queen on h6 and the queen on e7, but timing that is important. And I like this move, by the way, by Duda with a5, because if mm -hmm. he had not played a5, white wanted to play c3, but probably would be b4 and then c3 so as not to drop the pawn on b3. But a5 says, hey, your pawn's stuck here, and you have to be completely sure that c3 works. Otherwise, you give me a pawn in front of your king, and then my knight can back up to c5. That may not work out the way you intended to. So I like that Duda played a5. It also gives him the possibility to play a4 himself to try to break open this a file at all costs. And rook g2, interesting choice. I, I guess he's just preemptively defending here so he can put his bishop on d5. All right, but now we're getting back to this queen eight six. I the, the pawn on the pawn on d six is weak. What about bishop c four? Is that there's still b five miraculously because if bishop d five is rook takes g three, distracting mm. your rook from this square and uh, that's a big point. One. That's a big point. It looks like you're right. Although although Robert although. Hmm. Oh, I see Are what you're you trying sure? to do. You're trying to continue this line. And yes. King A2, very important, so you don't take with check. And I think I take on D1 rather than taking on G3. Because if I take on G3, at the end of this, I see you're going to check. This was me. the point. This was the point I was checking out. Like, this looks, this is over. We're just right. winning in this position. So you cannot do that. And I'm sure he's calculating, wait, Bishop C4 is on the board. Oh, so this might happen, but Bishop this... C4 is on the board. This is the high class trickery now. Are we oh, so what's happening here? Queen H6 does not work. And I think if Bishop F7, there's like Rook G7, maybe like barely keeping things together. I mean, I'm not convinced, clearly. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, Queen H6 in that position? But then I'm gonna take your bishop. But you're gonna take my bishop, and I don't have a queen queen to line up on the G line that would win. You're right. So what would I do here? Would I back up and then just back up, just and back then threaten up. just to take and start harassing you? Yeah, this is just it's just good. Your ki king on a two is somehow safe, and the king on h eight doesn't look so safe. Is that true? A four is coming though. A four, if is bishop. It? Yeah, oh, you're right. Oh my gosh, you have to move the bishop first, but a this is too complex, man. Yes, that's what I'm saying. It's I don't know. And b five is on the board. Bishop d five on the board, and we are there. We oh. are there, folks. 35 seconds, both players at only half a minute, probably with a little bit of an edge, but this is Duda's chance. He is ferociously calculating Rook takes on G3. It, it feels like it's now or never because C3 is coming next. C3 is coming next, and then his knight is going to get chased. 
and White is going to say, yes, thank you very much. Let's maybe even switch to the D-line. Whatever it is, it feels like he needs to just play. He's, he's backed up. He's, he's blinked. He did not play the move, and he's played A4 instead. Deciding on this line, I feel like C, take on A4 and then play C3, Robert. Looks like the right way to go here. Well, maybe you take this rook G3. So maybe he's tricking him into taking on A4 so that when his queen ah, gets to C2, nasty. he can yo-yo out to A4. Nasty point, indeed. That's a very nasty point. And instead, he's played rook C1. Oh, wow. he wants to take with the pawn because the bishop covers the A8 square, which means you're never getting your rook into the attack to mate me. That's a, such a strong bishop. But that well, knight on D4 white, is also good. White for choice. Now, the knight on D4, yes, the bishop... But I got to like white here as black is congested. And now the king to G7 interrupting uh, the play. Where's that king going? I think he just needed to make a move. And here he goes, queen to C3 and queen C7. And now they're flying. Uh -oh, I'm he, not sure here if comes. anybody's winning here. Rook C8 is, the king is on H6. <laughs> what? Rook C8, what? King, come on now. This is not real. No way you're surviving this position. Can you be? Queen C7, a trade. I think they're just blitzing now. They're not sure what's happening at all. What's this? G4. Oh, my gosh. Here comes the king. This is but dude's game. G4 he is a bad move. G4 was definitely a bad move. It did not. It was not correct. But you know what? Right around now, it doesn't matter what correct is because they're just blitzing. Two seconds left. It's three winning. seconds. Both sides just, go, just going down with no time on the clock. It's winning for black, though. Knight g3, knight takes e4. He can just win the pawn directly. And just a threat, and there he goes. And he's trying. He's picked off a pawn. And Duda using now the one-second increment that he's got. Will he be able to do it? One second, two seconds left. He's got to move. He's got to move. He's worried about giving up this b5 pawn, so he should keep that pawn. You want pawns on both sides. He breaks open the position. Now he's a past e pawn. This is it, Maurice. This is it. Knight this c4. This is definitely good. And there he goes, knight attacking, and he's going to pick off the pawn. And now Fabi with one last chance, but it's not going to be enough because the e pawn is also passed, and this is terrible. The pawn will push. B pawn will push. He's got too many things he's got to deal with, does Fabi. And, oh, the knight on e4 guarding the critical point. And now big-time trouble. Is he threatening to take? Fabi has one chance, but no, he's too slow. Too slow. Too slow. too slow. Amazing save by Duda. He needed that game, Robert, badly. And he got it. He still looks like he's in the same mood he's been the entire time, barely kind of moving his body, just kind of there. And that was huge, though. That was really important for him just to prove that he can beat Fabiano. He knows he can. He's done it before. But in this match, Fabiano has been the more dominant of the two players, and we're back to this French and queen to b6 because the pawn went to a3. So that was the big difference due to realizing he doesn't like these positions where black gets b4. And Maurice, are we going to see d4? What? Come on. <laughs> Come on. Well, you know what? The problem is they don't get breaks. They don't get breaks that where they, there's a second on the side can say, hey, 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 next time you get this position, you can play d4. I mean, they, they just don't get those breaks. And maybe they're seeing something that we don't see, Robert. We, we ourselves, we're not 100% clear. Maybe they're seeing some deep 2,800, 3,000 chess that we're not aware of. But D4 does look like a really good move in that position. I think that after into going to the three-minute portion, when they can look over their openings a bit, you know, take a quick breather, then we'll start seeing Fabi going for D4, much more likely. If, but if, now if Duda done. decides that it's a position he wants to play again. Because right. Fabi hasn't uh, hasn't Fabi won two games with Black already? He has, yeah. I mean, so you two both games in the French. They're discussing this French again. Duda might say it's time to leave this French. <laughs> this French uh, is hitting me in the head. Uh, Allez les bleus! The French are, are cheering as it looks like Black has done well both times. Although I remember this last time when he was able to play the move B four and get his queen H four and get some stuff. We were liking white a lot. And right. here comes B4 himself. Remember, we said B4 was the idea for white. And Fabi said, I don't want to see that again. That was annoying. So let me get this move in myself. B4, good shot. Get your play quickly. Right. You cannot afford to have Duda just go on the king side like he did the last time. You need to open some stuff up here. And so B4, he wanted to take so his knight could have captured on B4 and gone after this bishop on D3. But uh, this is smart by Duda not taking on B4, allowing Black to take on A3, trying to keep it close. But finally, Maurice, we see D4, we see the bishop on B7 come alive. And how to prove it, though? Yes, we like that bishop now, 
but is it going to amount to much? Or is White about to play Knight H5, bring the Queen in, and this poor King on G8 is about to get mated? Okay, uh, yeah, don't get too, too excited. Okay, we're gonna deal with that right now. He said, "Let me bring my knight back to e7, and then when I'm ready, I'm gonna kill your piece on d3. When your queen lands on g, about to land on g3, so I can play knight f5 instantly at the same moment, the exact moment your knight gets to your queen gets to g3. So knight h5 will be meant by knight takes d3, and, and then let's keep it going on the queen side." That's what Fabi's after because he's ready with the knight f5 defense. His bishop is beautiful. He stopped knight e4. I'm, I'm liking black. Black's done everything he wanted. This is why we wanted to play d4, Robert. This is the reason we wanted to play d4. He got it in. He's got b4 in. He's got the bishop on d3 on the threat. The bishop's beautiful diagonal. I think black's okay. Yeah, and I, res I rescind my temper tantrum that I had earlier that he didn't play d4. Maybe he just knows this line better than I do, and he's just saying, I can wait. If, you know, I can get D4 in my own time. And here it just looks so nice for black. The pieces are very strong here. This knight at some point can consider coming to D5 and into E3, but of course the D4 pawn will be hanging in many of these lines. But even bishop takes F3, Maurice, and then knight to D5. Bring this knight into these dark squares. It feels like black is the one first to the punch. It's very fluid right now. It's hard for me to give him my bishop on the long diagonal in this way, especially since that knight on f3 is only doing one little bit of work. But look at this. Now, let me tell you, I would very much not have gone after the a-pawn. In this case, look at Fabi said, I don't believe your attack. And knight h4 on the board is, I don't believe you. I think I can just snack a Rooney on this pawn on a3. And what attack do you have? Are you mating me with F5 and company? Yeah. I, I'd be scared. I I'm, would. Just, I'm just saying, I personally would be scared having my queen with this kind of excursion on the other side of the board when the guy is trying to kill me. You're also opening yourself up to discoveries, funnily enough, Marie. So queen A3, then knight H5. And once I play queen, queen G3, I'm not only threatening mate, I'm threatening bishop H7 check. Thank you sure. for your queen on a3. And if you take on d3, in comes the rook with tempo sliding over to g3 as well. And that looks like a problem. This, this, is a whole, this whole excursion looked like a problem. Putting a queen on b2, uh, that, you know, they say when, you, when you're trying to win a pawn, when you go to win material, it takes three moves. The move it took to attack, queen b2. The move it took to take, queen takes a3. And the move it takes to get your queen out of there anywhere you want. All right, that's three home moves you give somebody. So Duda said, oh, okay, knight h4. I'm thinking that, you know, that's your attacking move. You're going to take, I'm going to play knight h5. That's my second move. And you can make some queen move, queen g3. Thanks for the three free moves. I'm on the attack. I'm threatening sacks. I'm after you. So this is a, a really delicate moment for Fabi, dropping that queen on b2. And, and, and now he's played rook to c8. Clearly, he's not taking the a3 pawn. He's got to get counterplay before White winds up like a Mike Tyson punch and knocks you out. You know, it felt like one of those psychological experiments, Maurice, where you put some candy in front of a kid and they're not supposed to take it, right? A3 was the candy, but That's the cameras right. the are on you. The marshmallow yeah. experiment. We're watching. You don't want A3. You want to wait. You want to be patient. And Rook C8 lines up on the C2 pawn because that's the much better pawn to munch on here. So if he can't take this bishop and take on C2, that opens up the entire second rank and the bishop on B7 comes alive with a Rook getting down C2 into the attack. I hear you talking. I hear you talking, Robert. But mm, I'm, I'm feeling like something better happen real quick because the knight just landed on H5 and they're, they're guns that are about to be aimed at Black's head. Queen G3 is coming on the next move. The question is, is knight takes playable? Knight takes queen to G3 looks like the intermezzo you got to toss in there. And then G6. This looks like what has to happen. And... Is this what's on the board? Looks it's like what's it's on the board. The game position. And now, is black okay? This is the question. And I can end up on F6, but is it just a lonely night with no one else joining the party? By the way, Rook B1. Rook B1 is a yet another move to be thinking. Well, wait a second. Wait. Rook B1 is met by, by oh, it's black starting to move. So Rook B1 was an additional <laughs> threat, right? Rook B1 was an additional threat, so he had to get his bishop out of there. 
And now, does White have a, a blow? Maybe White has nothing. This is what he's calculated, that White doesn't have anything and that Bishop is going to be superior to both those knights sitting on the side of the board. And this knight on h4 sort of has to stay here because you do not want to allow knight f5 as that knight hits the queen and also enters the e3 square. So knight f6, as you're suggesting, and I agree with you, is just a check, right? My king can just go to h8 or g7, and unless you can follow it up very quickly with your queen infiltrating, then you're not getting what you're, you came for. Yeah, the problem is that white's rooks are not doing anything. I mean, the rooks need to be planted somewhere, but the window of the attack... That, that attack window on the, you look on the, on that king side is so small. There are no vectors leading toward that black king. Knight on f6, congratulations, but nobody else to join the party. So th this, this knight will be its own lonesome, like a COVID attack on it or something. That's, uh, you know, nothing going on. I'm telling you, this position looks fine for black. He's okay. He's estimated it quite well. No problems here. The question for white is, will he let black start to wind up anything? There's a rook c3 that might happen. There's a rook c2 that might happen. And white has no penetration points. Nowhere. Nowhere. Rook b6, who cares? What, what do you do as white? Maurice, it's sad, but what I'm thinking about is knight d7, knight b6, just so I can get this bishop off the board. Like I was just playing defense. I was like, let me bring a knight with a tempo on your rook, and then bring my knight to b6 with a shot on your rook and your bishop. But he plays knight e4, which does limit the scope of the bishop. But you could even consider at some point taking and bringing this rook down to c3 and going after this queen. What do you mean, <laughs> some point? <laughs> right away, that was a possibility, right? On the board, it was bishop, bishop take looked like an idea. The problem is it does give white a control of the f5 square. Right. That's what he, he just didn't want to give him any chance of being able to build on the attack because then the pawn is on e4, then he can play for f5, and there's some initiative there. Don't want to give him nothing. Like, no, nothing for you. No food for you. Let's just keep the attack limited. Knight on a great square, D6, Robert. But what's the deal? Am, am, I, am I not liking Rook C2 here? Like, So is there F5? That's what I was wondering. Because F5, you cannot... Oh, there it comes. You're, if Queen takes G3, you throw an F6 check into Mezzo. Very important move. And if you take, I take with my Knight. Thank you very much. Because after Knight takes F5... Your pawn is pinned, and I win your queen. So f5 was played. I don't, I don't get it. Why not trade queens? Let you get that move. And now uh, the knight can can find multiple squares. For one, c6 hits your pawn, but d5 also, hello, e3 is coming, and all your f5, f6 move did was block up the position. Now, you could dream about an end game. This is very important to note. An end game that might be better for white because the black king is frozen. That's why I wanted to try to work on that e5 pawn. And there he goes. He's moved his rook off the line so he can go after it. But suddenly there's some back rank issues in the position that, that white is trying to cook up. And this is actually very difficult for black with 16 seconds left, both sides in time trouble. I think it's very hard for both to play. And look at Fabiano very smartly going for this g2. Is it rookie one, knight g4? That's me. It's me. Rookie one, knight g4, knight f2. It's over. It's over. He blundered rook. He should have moved his knight first. He blundered Rook down, and Fabi stole the game. Look at that stunned look on Duda's face. He was Mr. Cool before this, but that stunned look, and Fabi with a half a smirk there as Rook B8 blundered the back rank, and as you pointed out, he spotted the mate as quickly as you did, Robert. Knight G4, hello, Knight F2. Your king can't go anywhere. Mott on the board. What a steal by Fabi. And that's just the kind of form he's in today, right? They... You know, people don't really believe so much in luck and chess, right? If he can continue putting the pressure on Duda, it's because of that that Duda's making mistakes. And honestly, Fabi had the better of the position. You said it clearly, Maurice. The pawn in F6, it looks very nice, but it's not amounting to as much as it would if you could actually create an attack and the attack was too slow. Fabi steals the point. I think that Duda has been too slow. Let's be real. Duda... Yeah has not been able to play incisively and get a lead on the clock. We have not seen him get a minute lead, 40 seconds even. It's Fabi every single game. And if Fabi continues to do that game after game after game, keep that edge on the clock, Duda's in trouble. And what's this position? D4, this must be some theory. But look at Duda, he's shaking his head. His eyes, I mean, he's glazed over. He's not happy right now. 
Fabi with a 4-1 score. Now, did smart, was it smart chess that said Fabi would only get four points? Because <laughs> he's got four right now. He's got four. I mean, the score was supposed to be five to four. Fabi's got four. Duda would have to win the next four games in a row. Who wants to take that bet right now? Mm, I don't think so. The way Fabi is playing, the way Duda is not getting his quick leads on the clock, uh, this is not great. But this last sequence, tricky, tricky. Yeah. What is going on here? Is Black just much better? I believe so. Rook D8 can pile up more pressure on this pin piece. There is C3. So let's count. We have one, two, three attackers on this D4 knight, and there are three defenders. So if we can remove one defender, we win this game. Is there a way to do that? Because White will try to play C3 next. So Robert, just... but the knight on the knight on F6 can prance. I mean, knight G4, I'm, I'm scared as scared. Like, look at this knight. What the heck? I mean, this is this is dangerous. This is pure preparation. This is pure preparation. And Fabi stumbled right into one of Duda's positions. This right here looks like clean prep, pure as ever for Black. You will not see this position happen again in this match. It's not going to – Fabi's out of this one. He's, he's just falling into something and Duda – just what the doctor ordered for Duda. Just what the doctor ordered. Um, I'm with you. The game is not over, of course, but oh, knight f2. Isn't that just... There might be some knight c6 and queen g7 stuff, but at the very least, knight f2 forks these rooks here, and that spells trouble for... What if he white. starts with knight takes, d, knight takes d4? Probably. Uh, probably I mean, isn't, isn't, that, isn't that just... Maybe he's over for a knight e6. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's over for a knight e6, but I don't buy that either. I mean, I just... I don't believe it. Can can Black even castle queenside here? <laughs> <laughs> Stop it! Oh my goodness, that looks awful. I, it just pins the knight, and it the sure rook does. the rook can't move because then the knight is lost here. So it's over. Actually, that just adds another attacker. You can't protect. It really it. does. It's over. It, it just shut the whole thing down. Pure opening prep. Duda needed this game badly. Duda needed this game, and Fabi is normally the one who falls for, who traps people in these things. He's played Rook D8 instead, leaving his king in the middle. After all, you cannot move the knight because of what looks to be Rook D1. I mean, unless unless there's a trick of some... Is knight E6 possible, Robert, or am I just dreaming, nah. fantasizing? Yeah. I don't believe in myself, but let's play it. What else are you going to do? You're going to resign otherwise. What happens on knight E6? Rook D1, and you have to... Let's play knight, knight f1. I'm just going to try to get my bishop in the game. And now? If I take, you have queen g7, I have bishop d4, and that's that. Okay. Now we cleared the cobwebs. That's the finish of that. So we yeah. got the story right. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. Can't do it. It's over. This is busted. But I, I'm with you, though. That is the best chance that Fabi has, even though Duda has way too much time to fall for some sort of <laughs> trap there. There's, there's something funny, Robert. Sorry. Play the same line again. 96, yeah. rook b1, bishop c1. Okay. Oh, it doesn't stop. Yeah, just a joke. Takes on e6, queen g7, and bishop d4, and it's still mate on b2 because of the pin. <laughs> so it doesn't help at all. That's mate on the board. Chess sometimes has a sense of humor and Fabi's not going to find this one very funny. No, he's not the one laughing here. So uh, he's just down a piece. The knight is pinned. And what do you think? If you're Fabi, you've out to a 4-1 lead. It's about to be 4-2. Do you just spend the rest of your time calming yourself down? Do you think he needs to just like take a breath here? Losing yes. with the white pieces is never fun. He thinks, and this is what he does. Right now, the clock is ticking. Clearly he could just resign and play the next game. But what he needs to do, and what he might be doing right now, is he's thinking, all right, what went wrong here in this opening? Let me work it out right now. I'm going to be playing the French next game. That's fine. But what went wrong here? And he's using this, this time, doing the Beth Harmon thing. He could be looking on the ceiling right now, going, hmm, what, I, my, what did I do? Where was the trap? How will I play differently next time? How will I improve? Okay, got it. And when that has settled in his system, he'll make some random move like 96, and then he'll give up the game. But this is out, no question about it. After pawn takes, there's no move. Yeah. It As is. we pointed out, this bishop is not guarding b2. It just isn't. And Duda 
probably will not sleep on this fact. Uh, it would be stunning if he did, but no. After queen takes on g7, he missed it. Uh, he, well, the thing is, the knight could take on d4, I guess, but he's just winning the bishop on f1. So he just he went for a different winning plan. Gotcha. But uh, yeah, I also was like, whoa. Wait, oh, but rook f8, let me just take this. Because queen e6 is one check. And I think this is actually an important moment for our viewers. Because queen e6 would scare most of us. Because it does look worrisome when your king's in the center, you get a check. But if we get this check, knight e7 blocks, a knight is a great defender. It takes away your Fantastic. remaining checks for your queen. And now I'm offering a queen trade while up an entire rook. Uh, that was really nice of you to offer a queen trade while up a rook. You're such a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> Offering a queen trade. <laughs> I'm glad you think I'm a nice guy, Maurice. We've been friends for a long time. Now. Oh, oh, Bishop A3. <laughs> oh, so unnecessary, but still so strong. So not nice. <laughs> so not nice. Uh, Don't move okay. the 97 now, though, because then you drop your queen. <laughs> Uh, you got no pieces to attack with. White is checking with one piece. There's nothing to attack with. Uh, it was it was a good time to resign before this. He could have he could have definitely just stopped the clock. Uh, right now, uh, is he just down an exchange at the moment? It is an exchange. I, I, for I mean, it's an ex three pawns. It's, a, it's an exchange for three. So he's somehow trying to finagle some kind of attack. But right now, Queen B two made as a threat, so you got to deal with that. And B3 looks like it runs into Queen E3. Oh, yeah. For, just for fun. Queen E3. Oh, Queen D4. Come on, man. Be oh, nice. My. Some some respect. Okay, yes. Black, White should have resigned a long time ago. So this, <laughs> this does allow Queen D5 check to try to keep the game going. And maybe Queen E3 would have been met by Queen D5 check as well. I'll bring it up. I'll bring it up. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, maybe queen e3 was queen, I think it's losing, clearly. Queen d5 check here, forcing rook takes queen, then bishop takes e3, but the rook back down with check, and then give us the f1 piece. I mean, it was over all kinds of different ways, so it didn't matter. But, uh -huh. Fabi, as I said, in for me, I have, I have a mentality, especially if it's a match situation like this, but, it's, but in particular, you do this in tournaments as well. Settle yourself. Settle yourself. Take time to settle yourself. And what Fabi did taking that long break, I hope he spent time settling himself. I don't think he should have made any more moves. I think he should have accepted the situation. It was bad. Forget it. Or if he was making moves, just make them quickly. But the key thing was to settle yourself, settle your brain, and get ready for this, for the next game after this one. Say, how should I have played? Now we're seeing a new French twist as Fabi has chased Duda out of the line that he was playing. Yeah, he put a5 instead of a6 and b5, but this pawn was on c3, so it was a different line all the way back here because the knight had been on c3, f4, knight f3 had been played, but knight c to e2 allows you to create this pawn chain. So that's why yes. things are a little different here. So he did, you, you like that when you chase somebody out of the line that they were playing and say, okay, go to something else, maybe you, your secondary line that you haven't prepared as well as a backup line. So Fabi feeling good about that for sure. Duda, in the meantime, has to settle things down. He doesn't seem to have an alternative E4 what, what to do. So he's going into these French positions straight forward and hoping that he gets some play. But at least he settled the match, Robert. It is 4-2 to two at the moment. So he was getting blown out. 3-0 felt horrible. 4-2, on the other hand, a bit different feel in this. And by the way... How badly is White doing in this match? Not well. N not well at all. Right? Uh, I mean, White looks, sounds like the, the score might be 4-2 to two White. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what the numbers. Fabi's won. Three wins for Black because JKD just won with Black and Fabi's won two games with Black. So at the very least, it's 3-3. Three to three. So I think Fabi won three games with Black. Because he mated him in that last French. He won the first two Frenches, and he mated him in the last French. So it's 4-2 so Black, you're three. right. Three, so four for Black. Yeah, I'd say Black's, Black's doing well. But hold on. What is the other game that Duda won? Duda just won with Black. What was the other game he won? Did he win? Why am I forgetting? The game he beat Fabi. He also won Black in game three. He also won with Black. <laughs> <laughs> it's 5-1 Black right now. It's 5-1. Black is rolling. In this match unbelievable man 
don't want to have the white pieces incredible so far in the match. And Black, by the way, in this position, also looks good. Yeah, this Rook on H3, you need to sort of get the sacrifice going, take on H7, Knight G5, all this kind of stuff. But I'm pretty positive that Fabi will not allow that. I wouldn't be surprised to see move like F5 played to close down the king side. And I'm not even sure Bishop H7 works. I just know the idea. I'm fearful of it. I do not want to allow it. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. And, and it's got to be calculated in every single move. Right now, Duda with a little bit of edge on the clock as he's gotten a complex position. This is a critical game, folks. This is a critical game. Fabi breaks through and goes up five to two. Uh, he will almost surely win this portion. Almost surely win this portion. So this is a critical game. We see that there's only 20 minutes and change left in this portion of the match. That's two more blitz games after this. As a matter of fact, he may be lucky to get the, the second one in. Well, I guess you would say, yeah, there are two more after this. So that's this is a critical moment for Duda. And Fabi decided he didn't want to see any Bishop H7 sacrifices, get rid of that stupid bishop on D3 and just play chess here. Uh, his bishop can, I love that maneuver you pointed out, his bishop can go back. And what just happened? Did so bishop, bishop D2 attacked this pawn, and the knight was in the way. So he dropped the knight back to A8 to defend it with the queen. Man, I hate moves like that. Me too. Like, like, <laughs> really. You, like, you can have my pawn. I hate moves like that. My goodness, did he really have to play that move? Probably not. Could, couldn't he have played? Yeah, I guess Bishop B4 looks lame also, but... but I like oh that better. I, I mean, you know, it seems, seems preferable, no? I mean, I, I don't know. I just... I hate moves like Knight A just to defend... Not only do you put your Knight on a horrible square, your Knight can't even move, right, for starters, and your Queen is tethered. I mean, it just feels like you, you gave a couple of moves up, but Black might just be holding the position together. You made this point about the bishop being able to switch diagonals from d7 to e8 to the g6 square. That's not going to happen. Nope. I'm starting to like white. I'm starting to like white. Now it feels as though Black must play for b5. Must. Must so play for b5 like at some b8? point. I don't know how he's going to get it, but he's going to have to get some kind of play. A knight back to e2. I'm not sure where that knight is going. Uh, Maybe. C3, b5. Maybe stop your plan. B5's got to happen at some point. It can't happen now, unfortunately, because the A5 pawn will hang with the rook on that square. So he's played B6, and now he's got he's got a... Whoa! I was saying he's got a torturous path to his knight getting in the game, but G4 on the board, and Duda feeling the confidence now, trying to make the big comeback, Robert. Man, that is a, a rambunctious, ambitious, audacious move. It's amazing how the position went from looking good for Black to a knight being on A8 and White just attacking with a free hand. So Fabian will have to address these moments here because it's just clearly good for White. You have a great spatial advantage. Your rook on H3 suddenly very useful, can come to G3 and play G5. You want to break open the king side over here. I mean, king F2 can be played, bring this rook to G1. What's going on? By the way, the move knight takes D3 is looking terrible right now. Yeah. It just caused pure flow for white. Queen went to d3, bishop goes to d2, and when white is able to just do a quick maneuver, knight back and show you g4, knight takes is looking awful as an exchange. It looks solid, but the bishop on d7, that's supposed to say, look, thanks for your bishop. I'm going to use the bishop I now have to show you why the bishops are strong. But bishop on d7 sucks. I mean sucks. The knight on c7, horrible. White just has all this space. Now, all that said, White still has to find out how to, to bash Black's head in. It's, it's still not easy to make progress here without giving up some kind of energy to Black. And there you go, Rook C1. Not a move I'd want to play because it might potentially lead to trades on the C line. But where does your knight go? And as soon as I said it, the knight went to E8. It, yeah, I, it, it doesn't have a future there, but he's looking to trade. Well, I didn't like rook c1 because when a side lacks space, you want to trade. So black doesn't really have much room to breathe. And now if you can trade along the c file and maybe get that b5 move in, even mm -hmm. if that costs you a pawn, you need to get your pieces active. Uh, but on the other side of things, how is white crashing through? Are you going to play g5? That may open up the f file, and there's a rook on f8 that will be happy about that. Will you play f5, but that could collapse your center on the e5 square and the f5 square. So 
it's not that easy for Duda to crash through, but trading pieces on the queen side doesn't feel helpful for him. Did not feel rook c1. I totally agree with you. Didn't why is your rook on c1? Were you threatening the sack on c7? Like, <laughs> what's the point? It was an empty move. He played it quickly and he had a minute lead on the clock. We we're talking about how much time he needs to start getting an edge on the clock, and he blew it in that moment. And now Fabi gets a chance to trade. The queen is on g6. It looks parked, trying to do something, but I'm not sure what it's threatening. I'm not sure the point at all, in fact. I'm not, I'm not now though. What is the counterplay for Fabi? He's now said knight to c7. He's headed to the move bishop e8 if needed. Get your queen out of there. That, that trade on the c file did wonders for Black's position. Absolute wonders. And it's only getting better on every move. It really is. Because even if the eval bar says white is still doing well, it's so much easier to play for black. You have a sigh of relief. Your pieces are coming out. And now taking on f6, he's deciding how he wants to do that. Rook takes f6, hits the queen. That's great. But it also makes the rook vulnerable to a quick g5, which will blast hey, open the position. The time he moved his rook back. He heard you. He heard you. I, I, there's going to be a bishop b4 check at some point. You know, he wanted to play knight a6, knight b4 is another idea. But all of this is too slow. And now here comes a knight to the e5 square. I would gift you my my bishop on d7 if you want it. If you want it, please take it. It's all yours. Here, I would play b5 and close my eyes. Just please. Just, just let's get something going, even though I'm probably busted. And here, g5 on the board. Okay, Duda has figured out how to pry open that side of the board. Look at this attack. And okay. actually... A big problem, Maurice, is this bishop is hanging because hg, fg, you can't take on g5 because the end of the line, the bishop on d7 hangs once the queen has to move out the way. That's a big issue for Fabiano. So maybe bishop e8 was necessary. Fabi down to seven seconds only on the clock. His clock is in precarious territory with Duda with 55 seconds and a raging attack. It's bad. Maybe bishop e8 instead of b5 was be much better now that we look at it. But here, the knight has been chopped off the board. White is just owning this position at the moment thanks to the bishop on d7 and the knight on c7 as the position opens up Fabi with pure desperation taking on a4 and praying that he's not dying on the other side but this looks terrible yeah rook f7 h7 check is important he goes 98 but even h takes an h6 and h7 mate is coming it's just over it's just no over. way to fight back and there it is a big time win for with white by the way for duda in that game absolutely I'm gonna, huge i'm going to bring up that moment because it's very instructive by you maurice saying that capturing on d3 releasing that tension made all of white's um, development very easy because right here yes there was the attack on the h7 pawn we talked about that you can play f5 to stop it but bishop d2 is not possible when the bishop's on d3 because the queen needs to defend it but after trading here look at how easy it was for white to develop everything protect the queen side attack and then you had a free hand over on the king side so you're right maurice taking on d3 i believe that was an inaccuracy a subtle one at first glance but it cost fabiano the game well i have a rule that i tell my students they're the three f's to trading it should be forced it should be forced or fantastic forced or fantastic or else it's going to be well you know the other f all right <laughs> that's my theory when i talk about the three f's of trading and fabi felt it in that position he did not trade it wasn't forced it wasn't fantastic so hey you know what fabi felt that and uh, he went down in that game here we see duda going back into this line that got him so much love and fabi certainly Switching it up a little bit with a pawn sacrifice on E4 temporarily, but now it looks like he'll win his pawn back. Yeah, although I wonder if you take on E4, if there's some kind of knight B4 hitting C2, hitting A2, it could be quite tricky here for Fabi to deal with. And it's perhaps a good lesson. Do you have to take this pawn back right away? Can you leave it there, start with King B1, he does that, and say E4 is falling in the very near future? Well, uh, there's some trickery here. Knight g4 is possible, preventing you from taking on e4 right away. Mm -hmm. uh, and then maybe playing for e3. But that involves not castling, not getting a bishop in the game. Uh, that, that could be dangerous. <laughs> that could be very dangerous, trying for this idea with no development. But it looks, it does look possible. White hopes to be able to take, and mm -hmm. he's done it. 
I expect on the board. Queen G3 could even, I was going to say Bishop C5, but I forgot there's a knight on B3 covering the square. You'd love to play Bishop C5. And Bishop takes B3. No, that's too much. You can't give that's up a, your bishops smart. and keep your king in the center. Right. So here we go in this. This is a dynamic moment as Queen G3 has been played. And Robert, you and I played a blitz game. The last game we ever played, we played a blitz game for charity. Uh, if you remember that, for was it for children's cancer? Ch yeah. Right. There was a charity we played in and we played an amazing blitz game. I mean, it was we had so much fun in that game. Fantastic game. You got me. But the critical moment that you mentioned was taking a pawn that was blocking up the position. I don't know if right. you remember the game at all. Yep. There was a moment when I, when I took a pawn that was blocking up your play. And sometimes you just have to leave those pawns alone and say, oh, I'm just going to go for other stuff. And I, re I just got the pawn back in a moment when I shouldn't have. In this kind of situation, Fabi said, you know what? You can even save your stinking pawn. You want to play F5 right now? <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. I'm with you. But your pieces will feel a little blockage. Bishop E2 is coming. And I'm just going to get free play. I'm going for free play there, hitting your knight, threatening. And F5 is on the board, this contentious position. Now, by the way, Bishop E2, H5 is playable. Will he play H5 first as white, or will he hit the Bishop E2 move first? So all this is what Fabi's looking at, trying to figure out what's the right way to flow here, because Bishop E2, H5 looks like you're never stopping these guys from being in the position. So maybe he has to play H5 himself so he can play Bishop E2 on the next move. Well, there's got to be something because I see 3.3 uh, is the evaluation for white. So what? I'm trying to find what it is. Is there some kind of knight? Okay, or nuance D6? moves. <laughs> knight nuance D5? moves are not what the computer believes in when it's giving this kind of evaluation. Knight? I, I, I really want to play knight D5 to get my knight in and force you to take me. But Bishop E2 played still at plus one and a half. So clearly still good for white. But So where... there was something bigger is what we're saying. Something bigger was on the board. That may have knocked him out, but he's playing the way I wanted to play with this kind of maneuver bishop. And here's the deal. You cannot develop your bishop on f8 without some pain. You do have to calculate there. Nice play. King to f7. Woo, some tactics are starting to float here, man. What is happening? It feels like a queen g6. Weirdness. <laughs> bizarre. You know, you know what I'm talking about, Robert. Some bizarro yep. tactics might start appearing on the board. Even queen g5 with the idea of g4. Wait, wait. There's this crazy. This, this is some sick stuff. I want my knights to migrate over there as well, but I don't see how to hit yet. Yeah. Is and by the way, when I, I didn't mean queen g6 right now. I meant the logical follow-up to an attack that ends up with such a such a crazy idea. But something's something's afoot here. How does white make progress, Robert? I'm looking at these queenside dark squares as well. It's like you have such good control on this diagonal here that, oh, he's setting it up. He's definitely setting up a knight a4 hop into b6. And mm -hmm. not only can you go to b6, this knight can come into c5. You want to chop down this bishop on e6, which is defending the light squares. And queen f2, it does open up your g4 move, Maurice. That one looks actually very tempting next because the king on f7 is not happy to see a queen in its line of sight. Well, when you look at a position, the first thing you have to do is look at your pawn breaks. Because pieces normally, unless they sacrifice, like the crazy queen g6 sacrifice I pointed out, pieces normally cannot enter positions because pawns are guarding squares. So the only thing that you look for, and the main thing that you look for to compete, to combat those pawns restricting your play, are pawn breaks. So g4 is a natural pawn break. h6 isn't because g6 and black shuts the position down. But g4 is a natural one. Otherwise, you have to find out squares for your pieces. Where can they penetrate? And you pointed out, Robert, the B6 square you spotted, the C5 square you spotted. Those are key squares in the position that you can get to. If you look around, you can scan the board very quickly and realize you don't have anywhere else to put your pieces. You might play Bishop D6, trade off this dark square bishop, and then maybe double rooks on the D-line. Even after all that, you're wondering, eh, well, if I could get that, if I could get that for free, but he's going to play rook d8 and start challenging that. So those posts are not great. What we're looking for are pawn breaks, like a g4 move, open up the game, and then try to smash your opponent. That's what he's looking for in this position right now, and that's what Duda is starting to analyze. What do I do about this? Bishop to e7 looks like the most natural move, but he's worried about g4, and he spent so much time on the clock while we've been speaking that he's down under a minute this is not good. I don't care what the oh. position is. And he's played h6. Oh, he wants that queen g6 to happen. He's saying, I'm going to play h6. And I don't fully comprehend what it does. Like, 
there was nothing coming to G5, at least not that I'm seeing. So H6? What's it got me about? real excited. And what's – there's some bizarre – am I am I spooking on some – oh, you played G4. I mean, yeah, sure. I, I had a bizarre tactical idea, Robert, of putting my queen on – Nah, it's too crazy. Forget it. I'm not going to talk about it. I, I wanted to spoil queen on g6 and sack my queen on an f7 bishop with bishop c4 check, maybe mating, depending on what you do. But <laughs> it, it was the, the idea is so fanciful, it's not worth even craziness talking about. But here we go. We have this position here. He's, he's played this g4 move and he's taken and put his king nestled in this cubby hole. But he is down two rooks for my count at the moment. Black has a rook and a8, a rook and h8. These pieces are not working. But how does white take advantage of the moment bishop the bishop is going to come to the e7 square and look at this he's saying i'm going to go after your e4 pawn i want the pawn your king as long as you're down a rook i'm not down two pawns as long as you're down a rook your rook on h8 i'm not down material yeah and i understand the move h6 a lot more now he wanted to prevent bishop g5 in the event of g4 because it makes white's life more difficult to re recapture these pawns but e4 is what the target is and 30 seconds for black Fabiano has plenty of time. He has a minute and 43 seconds. He can calculate. Now 20, about to be 20 seconds for black. Your king's on G8. Your rooks are not connected. You have no alert. development or coordination. I think that this should be a conversion over. for Fabi. Yeah. Over. This is over. This is blunder territory. This is what we're sniffing. He just needs to, to, to find moves on every move, Fabi, that's just like next, onto the next one, onto the next one, onto the next one. Knight takes E4. What? You dared? You dare take on h5? I mean, should I be sacking on h5 right now? Bishop Are you D6. Nuts? This is Bishop d6. Knight. And Ooh, I almost blundered. I want to go knight b to c5 to bring another piece in, but h5. What if you sack on h5 now and then play knight c5? Oh, I, I just feel like this must be an overwhelming attack. I cannot believe he survives this position. I would I have a hard time imagining that would be the case here. And I'm also looking Probably at Bishop g4, rook g1, knight of six kind of stuff happening. Yes, like yes, I feel you. <laughs> I like it. I like it. All of it looks good. There's some killer. There's, but the engine saying it's equal. So we're we're getting out of hand with all our ideas. But I don't think Black defends this position. And he's played my idea of sacking on H5. I'm not sure it's any good. He is up a rook at the moment, folks. The king can't get out yet. But is is he crashing through? He has no bishop C4 because of bishop F7. So yeah. did. Did, what's the next move here? Is it Maybe queen rook G f one is possible too? Or queen b three to take b seven is uh if did you're getting take, greedy. Did he take on f eight? He did. That is the last thing I would have done. That yeah, is like that, that would have been out of that wouldn't have been even in my my purview. I, I wouldn't have, would have seen that move. Take it on it. You just you just facilitated the defensive setup. Okay, maybe he's thinking, well, rook to d seven and eight seconds left, and you know there's something always going to be cooking in a position like this. Bishop C4, what you got? I really want to get knight F6 after because when the king's on H7, the G pawn is pinned, but the queen defends F6. So you just need to coordinate this. So queen C3 is always a possibility lining up for knight F6. But now Did black is A3? Pinned. Yeah, what was A3? I don't know. I don't know. You can't be giving the guy free moves, though. Just go for it. And now, now king H7, and it looks as though black is defending as the bishop cannot get to D3, and black is putting up a wall eight seconds left for Fabi while we've been talking unbelievable Fabi has spent all this time and he's not figured it out 19 e6 queen f5 and the moves are coming fast and furious Robert this is good for black this is great for black and it's hard to play for both sides two seconds for Fabi rook f8 played king a2 the a6 pawn can be captured but that g pawn is too wait it's gone as soon as I said it's too strong here's queen b1 coming but this is the trade, and it's one second. They're playing on increment only, but it's Duda with a time edge. Can Fabi possibly survive as moves are just being played? That that check, got to respond two seconds, and now he's Rookie blockaded. One. He's got a knight g5 idea eventually, but this is bad. No, this is awful. It's just winning. The, the rook is too strong for the minor pieces. Up and The knight's been trapped. The knight's been trapped. Duda oh. pulls it off. You know what I hate about that, Maurice? Look at the score. And the smarter chess prediction was five to four in Duda's favor. And you were saying Duda's not winning four in a row. He's won three in a row. And if Duda wins this game, smarter chess somehow is correct. Did he, no, he didn't win three in a row. He won he won four out of the last three out of the last four. Because it was three one, it was three zero, then it was three one, then it was, it was four, four one. one. Yeah, he's won three in a row. It was four, four to one, then it was 
No, it's four. Isn't it four to three right now? Is it four no, it's four? Four four. What? <laughs> what? Where have I been? Unbelievable! It is four. Wow, wow, Duda putting it together. Amazing. I thought he had only won three out of the last four. He's actually won those three in a row. And the, and smart chess, <laughs> yeah, making m making itself look super smart. If Fabi loses this game and goes down 5 4, the, the final score will be dominant. No I question just... about it. Duda is on a roll right now. Fabi, Fabi did not win a position. He should have won. Absolutely. And now things are looking bad. It should not be even. He was up three zip. The score should not be even. And I have to give a nod to Duda because he was in immense time trouble. His king was on G8. His pieces were not coordinated at all. And yet he survived long enough to get Fabi in time trouble as well. It was hard to find a knockout punch, and that's why he was able to win that game. And we have another French Maurice here, different position to be sure. And instead of our typical uh, setup that we've seen time and time again, we now have black with the bishop pair. The bishop on C8 not quite finding a useful diagonal for the near future. And white is going to play bishop D3, going to make progress on the king side. And it feels like Duda's position is slightly better. What what's his last move? He's, I guess he's figured out that bishop takes b5. It was impossible, so king f2, and you you expect from from black right now b4 and bishop to a6 to resolve this problem of this bishop, and then hope against hope that there's no attack. I think it's fair to say there's no attack. So time to trade off your bad piece. Mm, he's a little bit worried about the domination on the c line, however. Right. And we've seen this is old school classical domination along that line. Uh, go back as far as as far as Alakine doing doing the do with the, the C line. I'm remembering some great game. Remember that game where Alakine got so much domination on the C file, and then he doubled along the seventh rank, and then he put his brought his king all the way in. And you know the game I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. Who is it? Is it? I'm remembering Margate is in my head for some reason, but can't remember exactly. But still. You got to worry about that C file. And so he's decided not to trade off because he needs to control the squares along the C file. And he himself has gotten control of that line. And it looks as though Fabi should be okay here as he doesn't have any weaknesses. White does have space, but black has his play as well. And one of the problems I would say is you were mentioning Bishop a six and you know here Bishop B five is possible, but white isn't going to trade the bishops. He'll slide his Bishop back to B one. I imagine and try to keep the attack alive on the H seven square and F five is coming in the future. I don't see how black seizes active play. Whereas white's progress is much more manageable to my eyes. And I think Fabi, he's doing fine, but B three, just a three, lock that thing up, lock that side of the board up. Don't allow uh, black to crash through and, Feels like White's path, just easy to see. All right, well here we go. Spatial advantage, uh, trade off some pieces. The attack becomes a lot less likely now, and the issue really is going to come down to what is either side going to do. I would say this position or the GM level, super GM level especially, should be drawn. Uh, doesn't look doesn't look like there's real play here. You, you make a good point, Robert, about Black not having anything serious along that line. Black does have that C2 point, so White has to be careful for that. But again, if Bishop to B5, which looks like an auto move, by the way, then Bishop back to B1, and now Rook C2 still does nothing. How does he get play, does Black, given that White is going to get his little action going? That's real. I think it's... I don't see a way to stop White's variety of plans f5 looks strong at some point knight g5 maybe next because if you ever take on g5 h takes and no 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 your h file is a disaster so i'm worried for fabi here and i cannot believe i'm saying this after the start that he had smarter chess i don't know how he does it don't know how he gets these predictions and makes them accurate but duda is well on his way to a 5-4 lead and a victory in the five-minute portion of this uh, speechless championship match. Tremendous comeback. And by the way, I believe the, this last game started with less than a minute left for this portion of yeah. the event. So getting in yet another game to get even get the chance to make 5-4 as a number as opposed to 4-4. So amazing. I mean, 
smart chess is that smart? <laughs> it goes down to, yeah, there'll be like a little time left for him to beat him that fifth game. And Fabi's spending a lot of time now. Look at the clock deficit at the moment as Duda is, this is the kind of expectation we have for Duda, is to get Fabi in time pressure in the game and then put the pressure on some more and watch Fabi crack under pressure. And Fabi has a tendency, folks, and when he starts losing, he doesn't – let me I, I got to tell you, I just got to call it. He's a friend of mine, but I got to call it. He sometimes just starts to go backwards. Yep. He doesn't stop the bleeding. And, and, and I'm talking about particularly in Rapid and Blitz. We've seen him do this in a lot of Rapid and Blitz events where he doesn't stop the bleeding. He loses some confidence. He doesn't right the ship and say, look, I'm going to draw a few games. I'm going to settle things down. And he's done that right now. And a number – three in a row, maybe four in a row in a second – he doesn't figure out what to do. Queen C7 was not a move that suggests that he had something quick to do because the queen has nowhere to go. Queen C2 doesn't do anything. Obviously, there's no sacrifice. That's kind of fun. And no, just nothing there. So what is he supposed to do here? The, I, I don't know. I guess he's trying to queen A5. That looks like you're bringing all your pieces away from your king. And actually, I want to quickly say that what's been interesting thus far is while Duda has seen the stronger the two in time scrambles, Fabiano has jumped out to a lead on the clock in the early stages of the game, which could hurt Duda in the three-minute portion when you don't have as much time because Fabiano's openings have seemed a little bit better. But something about this French, I, I wonder if Fabi will actually just deviate from it entirely because in the last bunch of games where uh, JKD has had the white pieces, he has proven an advantage. And King F2... Talk about an unexpected move here, Maurice. Is he trying to, like, go G5, G6, and then say, I need the G file for my rook? Honestly, I think he doesn't know what to do, and he's also letting Fabi try to figure it out. I think this is a great strategy. 246 left on the clock. Don't give your opponent concrete problems to solve. This is evil. This is evil chess. I'm just going to make a couple of moves. Your turn. And then I'm going to make another couple of moves, and don't mess up. I'm not going to have to try anything because you might mess up and help me yourself. So let me just chill. Let the seconds tick off your clock. Pretty soon, Fabi's going to be under 30 seconds, under 20 seconds, with nothing on the board to do. Bishop a5 is nothing. Look at that. Rook g1. He's going to go bishop b6, though. And rook c4. Maybe try to get, get an action on the d4 square. And then if rook d1. I, I have mean, nothing after that. You see, That's just you, see you see, he made it. He spent a few seconds. And now, if Duda wants to, now he decided, I'm going to break with f5. Rook c4. Now, he can just play rook d1 right now. And now what? Seconds tick away, going off for Fabi. You see that? What to do? What to do? He may not be threatened with anything at the moment, but he doesn't know what to do, and he had to make a move, and the seconds tick down. Now down to under 20. This is what I was talking about. Duda did not have to do anything. Just let Fabi make a couple of moves, play play defensively, and you're it's, just in trouble. And it's now over. F6, it's and over. it's over. This is blasting through. Perfect strategy. This is lights out as Black has nothing to do here. He can think all he wants. Duda wins 5-4. Smart Chess has predicted it unbelievably. All right, I'm calling it before it's over, but this is one of those. It's like Biden winning the election. It's over. It's done. This one is gone. And 5-4, to four, just like Smart Chess said, an incredible role by Duda. Seriously, I mean, Duda has played several excellent games in a row. He has a great handling of this French defense from the white side, and Fabiano needs to fix his openings because I don't think he wants to keep getting into this battle in the French. Yeah, he's probably avoiding his mainline theory to save that up for his important candidates tournament whenever that resumes. But Maurice, before we go to break, what recommendations would you make to Fabi if he's going to win this match? Better, faster. He cannot, his instincts have left him. I feel something, maybe maybe he needs some almonds. I'm going to say it. Maybe some almonds and some raisins. Because you feel the energy sucking out of his game. He slowed down. It's not only... Duda is rising in strength. Duda is feeling himself and playing with flow. You've got to break that flow, and you've got to play fast. Maybe you change up openings for a couple of games. I don't think it's a real, necessarily an opening problem, as Duda has shifted up himself. But he's got to get back in flow. The chess, speech chess is not about opening theory. It's about flow, and you can feel the energy out of Fabi right now. I think he thought he was going to roll in this match when he was up 4-1. It's on. It's on. He's in trouble. It most certainly is. And, well, the player is going to take a break. We will do the same. And for those of you who are subscribed to the Chess Channel, enjoy this primetime SmackDown. I'm not even sure who's playing, but it is 
definitely going to be a good one. So we'll be back in a few for more action from the Speeches Championship. Hey, Donnie, man, you ready? I have never been readier for anything in my life, Robert. Okay. You do sound some... really excited, and it's making me a little concerned. I am excited. It does not capture the extent of my emotions that uh, the possibility of kicking Grandmaster Hess's butt. Oh, and that's what I live for. All right. Well, when I get at least one upset victory, don't cry. Okay. Just, just, just so we're on the same page. You're talking about hypotheticals here. I, I don't like hypotheticals. I like reality. And let's see what the reality has in store for us. Well, let's see if any of my studies of your bullet games will help out. Darn, I thought you would studies do something. Studies of my bullet games? I thought you would you do study. something random, you know, make a bad pre-move. I think I'm going to play it Alpha Zero style. Alpha you Zero are, likes to my, get my, just... my position's already terrible, okay? We, we know that. We know that. We all get you, you. No, I mean, you're a good player. I'm, 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 I'm not going to deny the facts here. Wow, that's the nice... Oh, I forgot you can, your bishop or queen can go back to d2. Okay. Yeah, I can go back to d2. Oh, well, my queen can go other places other than those two squares. True, true, true. I, I, I invite you to castle short. Oh, queen d7, okay. I'm going to okay. castle short. You, you told me, so I'm going to... I yeah. told you and you did it. Okay, that's that's the kind of relationship I like. I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're buddies. I just try to be helpful. We are. Yeah, I think my position's not bad. Let I'm me get... I, don't, I think my position's pretty darn good. Do you? Uh, well, we both clearly, Robert, we have a disagreement here. We both think our, but Dr. Sancredi likes this position too. Well, that was a nice move. I didn't, I didn't was see. it? Oh, thank you. Did you oh, just compliment E7. Me? Oh, oh, oh my oh, gosh. Oh, oh. Leave me alone. That ain't, the, that ain't the only square that's hanging. Everything's a problem, all right? Just and I'm going to take this one too. Right, that's we'll what they're going to do in North Carolina. All right. All right, right, all right, all right. I got this. You missed that You one? got this? Oh, I, I know. This is all falling into my plans. Yeah, this, I, this is all of this. I'm gonna okay, be honest so with you. This doesn't look. We're gonna very take good. this or feel very good for me. Now we're going to. Okay, let's not miss checkmate though. Let's go here. And here. Um. Okay. Now let's. Oh, queen h2 may you devil. <laughs> oh, you think I'm gonna miss it? <laughs> no. You think I'm gonna miss it. I thought you might, honestly. Oh my! I almost did. I I did not play e5 to prevent that threat. I'll be honest with you. Yes, you did. Come on. Don't make yes, me feel good. Did. It's like, oh my god. <laughs> oh, you want to do this? Oh crap. Oh, you just fell for it. Let's go. I Let's did. go, Danya. Let's go here. Oh, how it? Oh, rook h5. I thought I'd just get you on time. Oh. Okay, I I did cut that a little bit too close. I will admit. I feel like I almost had you there. That was a nice trap in the end. I have yeah, to yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. You got caught off guard. Okay. Okay.
it's looking really ominous, especially given that he's down on time. But this is the Magnus Carlsen squeeze. Um, wow. And, and knowing you don't get many winning positions against Magnus Carlsen, nobody does. And Carlos playing in front of hundreds of people. Imagine being in his shoes right now. I mean. Wow. Unbelievable. Up by four games. Oh, I can resign. Yeah. Carl knows it. It started with 16 players, and uh, it all came down to one man, Magnus Carlsen, who won. This is a pretty great match. I know people love Hikaru Nakamura. Hikaru is the favorite for a reason. He's a beast, an absolute monster. It has been Hikaru's Speech Chess Championship this 2018, Hikaru Nakamura. The overall one seed takes it home in the Speech Chess Championship. Honestly, these guys have played each other so much. Obviously, this is a rematch of last year's SCC final. What a finish, by the way. I mean, that's been the story of the match. Hikaru Nakamura has just kind of outswindled, outtricked, and outcalculated Wesley in the critical moment. Oh, dude, that's a nice move. Wesley's shaking his head. Hikaru wins the one. He's going to draw this game. I can't believe that what just that happened. That is unbelievable. Hikaru Nakamura holding that position. And as we return, we want to remind everybody to get involved with Guess the Move. No surprises here. I am Dragon B70 is the top guesser for the game, uh, one of the games we just saw. And get involved because the top three premium guessers will win cash prizes. And if you're not a premium member, you will win premium membership. So that's a good deal for you. And well, speaking of guessing things correctly, oh gosh, it pains me to say this, but Smarter Chess was correct. Five to four. And I think, Maurice, that Fabi just wanted to help Smart Chess out. He knows it's a tough environment out there. Um, you know, finding a new job won't be so easy. So he went from a 4 1 lead into a 5 4 deficit. Well, you know, pollsters have been having a tough time lately, as you know. But Smarter Chess seems to be the one they need to go to. Like, if you want to find out about chess and maybe presidential elections, Whoever's running Smarter Chess might be the man, because right now, that was a precise guess. 5-4 was indeed the final result and came in under the wire because Duda needed to have yet another game, and there were only seconds, it seemed like, left for them to start that ninth game and make it possible to go 5-4. Fabi's got to be devastated right now, and I see the next prediction to be 5-5. I don't know. You lose four in a row. Sometimes it's not the score, it's how you get to that score and he got to this score by losing four in a row he was a four one <laughs> come on you yeah. lose five four after being on four one it, it, the momentum might have shifted already will fabi find the energy to come back and make this match uh, as competitive at least at this phase as we think may be the case well we are about to get the games going and fabi in the three minute plus one second increment time control we just saw 5-5 five, five is the estimate, and at this point, I think that JKD does have the momentum, and we're getting another one of these Sicilians where Fabiano has had some good positions, but Duda was very sharp. He was alert when his back was against the wall in that previous game, and Maurice, once again, we're in this line. Well, Duda is making the move H4 look ridiculous. Whoa. I mean, every position we've seen so far, he's just making H4 that's supposed to be the super fancy move He's making it look completely ridiculous. Like, yeah, I'm getting a good position every time. You can play H4 if you want to, but I know exactly how to equalize. And now we see this line appear on the on the board. And Duda has more time than he started with. He's still in his preparation. Clearly. What in the world did we just see? Like, knight is pinned. Knight takes E4. Okay, I, you take my queen, I take yours. Queen E3, knight takes. So he gets it off the board. Knight takes D5. Saying, I don't want my piece back. This is pinned. There's a discovery here. There's a rook on D1 in your queen. So this is all some kind of theory that Duda knows really well because he was up on time. But this is a problem, Maurice, right? Where both players, they know the first stages. It's who is going to be able to output the other from this point. Because it's not game over. It says zeros. But you have to prove that. It's not just a, a quick draw. 
Well, the problem is the liquidation factor has come very quickly. And now you're right. It is not going to be just an easy draw from this position. Black has to stop and think. Bishop c4 was a nice move. Just add a little bit of extra tension to the position. Remember when that bishop got stuck on f1 in that nasty game where it never moved? Now the bishop is in the game. White has clean development and the h-file. So if you want to castle queenside, you're going to have to think about castle kingside, excuse me. You have to think about the fact that that h-file is open. So b5, trying to force the action, and I'm seeing this bar go completely nuts on this last move. It's got to be a knight e7 move, no? Or is it a knight f6 move? I'm looking at knight f6, yeah. He takes an e7, probably even better, according to this, keeps the advantage. And what, does it might come back to f5, this bishop's pin? Otherwise, well, I can you, just take. You, you, well, but what's wrong with is queen takes bishop? Is it just going to be a straightforward capture? Capture though? Is it, that doesn't seem. Oh, maybe you just is pick it, off. Oh, you can't. Oh, it's knight. It's knight d4 at the end. Take and play knight d4. You can't castle. Well, you also, could. There's queen e4 <laughs> here too, Maurice, hitting you in uh, all directions. Oh, that's nasty. I mean, something has to be winning here. But does knight d4, queen, no, queen e4 looks really good. King b1? For real? <laughs> and it says, still says plus 4.7. But you can't whatever. castle. You can't castle because a queen to d3. Oh, that's so Queen d3 show that. is nasty. So you just, you can't castle. So he's played a move where he just put his king away and he said, okay, your turn. If you can't castle, the most natural move on the board isn't possible. It's unlikely you have a move here. Your, your you know position's just too terrible. And there's no bishop f4 checks because putting the king on the light square over here means that if you do castle and the queen comes to d3, there's no sudden checks on the Correct. king. So king b1 is yes. that calm move. And that's where the evaluation mark can be tricky because you and I were looking for the direct knockout. And Fabi says, hey, I'm calm, cool, and collected. I may have lost four games in a row, but I know how to play some mean chess. And I mean, I don't think our your queen e4 was bad. I don't think knight d4 was bad. <laughs> I think... King B1 is great. I think White's just crushing. This position, as long as you cannot castle, this is trouble. Oh. Now, Queen E4 does allow, and he's played, look at this, way off center move, Knight to A5. What a strange move. It was threatening very concretely, this Knight move. Maybe he needs to play, I mean, is he going to play Knight B7? Knight b7? Maybe queen e4 and then knight b7, right? Just, how can black move here? Just feels I'm like trying to figure, tied down. I'm trying to figure out. The problem is having so many wins and white's clock starts to tick. Right. It seems like, it seems to me that you play queen e4, your move, and wait. Or queen b7. I mean, just too many options. There's too many options, but that's why I say you make the practical one. You play queen e4. He cannot castle. Rook h7 is a threat right now. You cannot play queen takes g5. So there's a threat on your pawn. You can't take on g5 because your bishop is hanging. Knight c6 or knight b7 is coming. There's got to be a boss move. It's got to be a boss move. Look how yeah. many threats. It's, it's, it's done. a centralized queen, and there's nowhere. Like, what do you, whatever you move, there's a move for. Knight c6 is coming. There's just too many moves. Right, and queen c7 can't do that because e6 falls with check. It just Correct. feels like... The queen guards c2, by the way, oh, on top yeah. of it. Important. There's no move. There can be no move. A chess wouldn't be fair if there was a move. It wouldn't e5. be logical. And now this move, e5, creating a, a second weakness, another weakness on this square. Now, isn't h7 hanging? If I just take it, that's just one. I don't even want it, but it's possible to take it. It's also possible to do what he just did. G6. Don't castle because of rook takes h7 and mates are coming around your king. Uh, actually, we can just start with queen d5 check and then right. you'll be done. So castle's just out. You got to play this move. Oh. And now, ooh, mm, stop it. Rook at one. You got four seconds left to defend this monstrosity of a chess position. <laughs> He's just traded and now his queen can penetrate if it wants to. This is over. Yeah, queen b7 looks like it does the trick. I mean, where's this rook going? It's under attack. The bishop on e6 is still hanging. Queen g4 yep. getting into e6 while attacking the queen e6. Isn't and uh, just... queen e6 is, is also lights out, as you said. That's that's done. No moves. A blast of a win for Fabi coming back that quickly and just overwhelming him.
That was dominant chess, Robert. That was dominant, dominant chess. And we saw them blitz out the opening, right? Judah had weird. three minutes and four seconds after something like 12 moves. And we see zeros on the eval bar, but the position is so complex with that open H file, the king in the center. Yes. I wonder if Duda will go back to that line. I mean, he must because he's been playing it this entire event. But Fabi saw something, right? He did some quick mm. glossing over his openings and he saw something that he liked. But but you know what? That Bishop C4 move, it was really well-timed. Let's Let's... Yeah. Be honest. Bishop C4 was really on time. But B5 has to be the culprit. B5 was the problem. You, you don't have time to play a move like B5. B5 said, go ahead, do your worst. And boy, did he do his worst <laughs> on him. Like, bang, in your face. So B5 was a huge blunder in that position. Yeah. Does, Duda, does Duda know what to do about this the next time he sees it? Because it was his preparation. It doesn't matter if you have preparation. Sooner or later, you're going to see a position you've never seen before. Your opponent's going to play a move that the, the engine didn't suggest, and then you're going to be on your own, and you have to figure it out. And he doesn't have time to go to the side and check his engine or get a second to say, hey, dude, you should have, next time you see Bishop C4, do this. So that's going to be challenging for him. And Maurice, I have to say, we are not seeing the French anymore. Five and with the Black Pieces played uh, a king's pawn opening, so e4, e5, and here we are in the Italian game. But the knight went to h7 just a move ago. Knight h7 that caught Duda by surprise. He spent 27 seconds to play b4, and after queen of six, he did another 34 seconds playing d4. In fact, sacrificing a pawn in a standard manner because white will likely throw in the move e5 with the king in the center. You have to be very careful before you go pawn grabbing in the center with your king uncastled. These Joko Pianos with these weird night maneuvers have been so weird. <laughs> Let me yeah. just use the word again. Been so weird. Knight, knight G8 we've seen. Knight from F6. King H8, Knight G8 mm -hmm. in a position where you say, you can't do that. The laws of chess say that the, the central position will open up and you'll end up in trouble. You can't get away with maneuvers like that. And concrete computer analysis said, oh, yes, we can. Actually, we can do it. No problem at all. And so Black trying for his play b5 though concrete threat by the way uh line, this a line might open in a weird way as well i'm using this word weird robert what could i get another adjective please i mean it's uh, unbelievable obscure i'm an english i'm an english major and i, I can't come up with another word than, oh trust me so, i know you have a very extensive vocabulary so you don't need to convince not, me but not today not well, that's today. because things are weird. Things have been weird, <laughs> right? It was four to one, then it was five to four Duda, and now it's five five, and we're getting new openings and Bishop back to E2. So I have a lot of experience playing the black side of the Italian and these kind of atypical knight maneuvers. Now I'm using the new word, uh, bringing the knight to H7 to G5. It makes sense, but white does have the big center. So uh, the knight on A5, not exactly thrilled to be there. That's no. You know, offside here, knights on the rim. We don't often like those. But how do you make progress from White's point of view? I guess that's the essential question. And finally, castles. After years of research, he finds castles as the deep move. Well, we've got this position, as you said. How does White make real progress? We don't want to open up the line for this bishop on a7. That bishop sits there and waits and waits and waits and then one day wishes hopes that you will capture so that he can do some damage on that f2 square so white says okay i make one more waiting move bishop a3 but now I, we got your threat of taking on e5 we'll move out of the way and what's your move now queen c2 now this knight that's on g5 it doesn't really want to trade for the f3 knight it doesn't really want to solve this problem it would love to go back to e6 and keep assailing that square d4 and looking at the f4 square okay but he decided i was i was wrong so i let go for this trade on f3 as a better way to play the position i'm a little surprised by that by black but it still looks like he's fairly equal here the 96 move would have kept the tension robert but this by black is saying i'm not worried i think i'm still going to be okay although right now for me that knight on a5 is culprit number one 
Right, that's why I'm looking at c5 here as a way to stop white from doing the same and to challenge this bishop immediately. But you're right, this knight is stuck out here. And if I can line my queen up on c3, that knight could already be a goner. So you have to be very careful right now if you're Fabi. c5 doesn't look great because you mentioned the bishop hitting the f2 pawn. Playing c5 makes your bishop look worse in addition to your knight being trapped over here on the rim. So. And what I don't like about the situation is Fabi being down to 35 seconds and ticking. We're yeah. still in the opening. This is, we just left the opening, like literally just left the opening. And now we play this move, c5. We've buried, if you look, like you said, buried this bishop, and we haven't solved the knight problem. The knight still has years, years into the future to, to wonder when, does, when do I get back into the game, guys? Like, what's the deal? You might, have to, you might have to rely on some kind of bishop f3, rook d4, even if it costs you an exchange. It's a thematic exchange sack with a rook d4 move. And that's why I put the bishop on c7 is, hey, if you take me on d4, my bishop can open up. But for the time being, Fabi trying to sit on the position, but due to up 25 seconds nearly, it's still tense because there's no breakthrough tense. just yet. And I'm looking at both sides, Maurice. Rook d1, rook d5, and for black, rook to d4. Who's plopping a rook down in the d file first? And knight back... I think that Black was relieved to see what just happened. No question about it. And now a capture and B6. And he's at least got a path back uh -oh. to the B7 square. But guess who has a path to D5? Here comes the knight. And oh boy, this ain't going to be fun. Knight on D5. Well maneuvered there. And Black's pieces look a little silly. No. The, knight's not, the knight's not facing any difficulty on on the a5 square and he looks like he's gonna play the move f6 at some point to try to shut everything down he needs to do it quickly knight back trying to get the knight into the game makes sense maybe this rook come to a3 just try to take over the a file and strategically black is lost but it might not be so easy to get that knockout punch and that's really where the issue will be for uh, jkd and oh down to 10 seconds almost for both here this is a time scramble so rook has it's a to total go. time scramble and he's taking over the a file himself no real threats for white. So black is hanging in there. And I, I just want to play F6. I'm, I don't know why he wasn't playing a long time ago. I just I just want to play the move. F6. But now Fabi understanding that the time pressure, it's all about just making moves. It's all about just go. making moves. And he's threatened something. Defense, rook back, and just make a move. Just keep going. It's can you, just... Can you take on C4? I mean, B2 is hanging in many of these variations. So You're calculating lines, Robert. They just want to repeat. <laughs> they just want to repeat. Just Fabi just moving rook, rook. Play of six already, Fabi. Just make the move and get a solid position. Stop looking for reasonable ideas. Three seconds, four seconds left. Can they last, Robert? This is crazy. I know it is. The 95 is very strong, but that's all that you have for White right now. The Rook coming. Watch out for Rook doubling on the first rank. That would be devastating. Looks like they may be trying to flag each other. I mean, <laughs> Fabi doesn't care. He's repeating moves unless he sees a threat. And now you should play of six. It's finally on the board, and he just should repeat. Just, this is ridiculous. Neither side knows what to do exactly, so they're just pushing things around. H5 on the board. G G6 at some point probably necessary, but you're right. I mean, they're just trying to figure out how not to lose on time at this point. He just looked like he oh. hung the... But now C4 is actually hanging. Oh, no, two pieces are hanging in this position, but he can play Knight F7, and he's just dropped a piece. He just dropped a piece. Fabi dropped the piece, and now he's lost. Now he's lost. There's the game. Unreal. Oh my gosh. And if that's any indication for what we'll see in Bullet, then Fabi's in huge trouble because there is that one second increment, which gives you time to think a little bit to regain your composure. Fabi never was able to do that. Granted, that Duda's position was better from the very beginning. He had control over the board. Sorry, Robert. Put your knight on F7. Leave your knight on F7. Play rook A2, rook A4, rook A2, rook A4 until the guy threatens. It was totally irresponsible what he just did. What he was did was irresponsible. And in a blitz game, no way. And here we have this position again. Fabi just blew that game in. When you're down to those last few seconds and you have a mechanism for making rep rep repetitive moves, that's what you do. I remember my, my friend William Morrison. They call him the exterminator. I don't know if you've ever heard of him, Robert, yep. but he's a New York product, straight out of Brooklyn. And he had one trick. When in time pressure, keep your rook close to the clock, wherever the clock is, and keep moving. When you have a situation where you can repeat moves, keep repeating moves near the clock where you can, you can hit your clock and just keep repeating the move. Short, short moves with the rook, 
Rook A2, Rook A1 if you have to, and just be right near that clock and just do it over and over again. Same thing applies in this situation. He had Rook A2, Rook A4. There was no reason to deviate from that, and he ended up losing a piece and the game. And now we see the same line. Duda seemingly has done uh, a little bit different in the line, but I'm not sure he's improved his prospects dramatically. And here's B5 on the board again. There has to be some kind of issue with this bishop on d6 hanging. I was already looking. Bishop d3. Wait, what? This what? Lennon? What is this? I'm is confused. This legit? There may oh. be some kind of bishop takes b5 check and queen takes d5. Is that happening? I think he's, I think he's lucky if that's happening. Rook uh, d4? He didn't plan this. Folks, <laughs> he did not plan this. He is fortunate that this is on the board. And Duda is looking at it like, what? Are you for real? I, I feel, mean, I feel like this is somewhere in the Fabi files. Like this, you don't play Bishop back to D3 hanging the knight. He could have spent more time. It said he spent seven seconds when Bishop D3 and then went Rook to D4 and he's getting his piece back. Oh, watch out for Bishop uh, before though. You might, you better hope you get your piece back because there's no Rook D5 just yet. And King B1, there's a Bishop H, a Bishop B3 siding. Yep. Solving that problem, except the bishop on e5, the bishop on, on d6 is still a problem. Even on e5, it could be a problem. I, I don't know. White, I don't think this is the Fabi files, Robert. I disagree. I think Fabi is now on skates and hoping that it works out for him. He can throw in a check. He does that to get make sure that his queen isn't getting pinned when the bishop comes to f4. And That's this is under attack. If bishop e6, there's rook takes d6. Because if queen takes, always look. If pieces are on the same line as each other, move the piece out the way that's between them. Bishop takes b5 check. We'll scoop up the queen on d6. So there are tactics here that will regain white the piece. And queen e7 was played. Rook takes d5. And I see the eval bar off the side here saying white is just cruising. That's incredible what just happened. I mean, from oops, oops. Oh, wait a minute. I'm back in business. This is amazing. The bishop on f4 and the knight on g3 do not compete against the developed pieces that white has. And black is down a rook. Black yeah. is currently down. A rook on that square has a lot of problems to solve. We've seen this before. Will Fabi be able to make the breaks he needs to get the big advantage in this position? And I do feel something weird about this knight on g3. That bishop, that this construction, this constellation of forces is keeping him afloat, but something feels weird. And now g6, oh man, something really feels strange here. If you could somehow play a rook d7 and a bishop c4, Maybe c4 first. There's actually rook d7, and you can't play king g7. What's wrong with what's wrong with that? I'm just to show that you can't play king g7 because you walk into a pin and lose a piece. Rook d7 looks great. Uh, Except c4. rook d rook d7 is bishop takes on g5. You have to calculate. And he actually is giving up the g5 pawn because there's rook to g4 hitting both pieces here. So Fabi finding I'm saying, the but if rook d7 right now, right? If Fabi. Fabi played rook d7. So now uh, the, the problem is this. This is what I was asking. Right. What exactly is the point? Well, he, he got it this way in the best possible continuation. Or wait, he, this, is this the live position? Yeah, he brought his rook to d4 to challenge uh, the bishop. my bad. So he, he found this. At, well, yeah. Um, so no, wait. No, it's not your bad. I mean, it's good to illustrate. Rook d7 is the natural move. But it said he drops his rook to d4 to challenge the bishop, kick it to a worse square. And if takes, but there is bishop h4. So exactly. He... I, exactly. I'm not, I'm not necessarily a fan of the two pieces here. Although it's although that knight, uh, let, me, let, me let me switch that. Yeah, it's good. That knight on c5 is a monster. And you just need b4 to cement it. And that's done. And the, the a6 pawn with the b5 pawn and the bishop. But there is a 3 to 1 on the other side. So there will be counterplay. Three to one. I'm looking at a four right now to scoop off the a six. I think yes, just... got to be aggressive. Got to be aggressive on that side. Go, go, go. He's got to run. And now he wants to take on a six. He doesn't want the a four pawn. He wants to take on a six. And then the b pawn will be a beast. This looks winning. Yeah. Two on none on that side of the board. And oh, don't allow rook takes c five with your bishop hanging. That's the one tactic you do not want to overlook here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's not going to happen no. and here goes the pa the counterplay this is what he wants this counterplay on the other side an interesting move rook f3 saying will you play rook f5 
you think you're going to be holding this position down. Not going to happen. And wow, A3 on the other side of the board. I think you can just safely sit your king on A2. But I guess the point is if you take on A3, we liquidate and maybe there is some chance with H3 and rook E3 check. But no, rook G5 rookie. is the issue. But he's played bishop F1 yeah. to, to prove that this idea does not work. This idea does not work. You sacrifice your pawn for no reason. And now all white has to do is move the knight and start pushing him, baby. And this is going to be a big problem. Yeah, though, this G2 pawn is a bit of an issue as well, right? Bishop E4, there's F5, a very timely Are you worried move. about the G2 pawn, Robert? I can play B B5. You, you really want this pawn? I guess you're right. I, I'm just making sure my opponent doesn't queen, but Bishop E4 but now? Bishop, exactly. Bishop E4. Yeah. Very and you have to spend years trying to figure out. I mean, B7, B8 is very compelling. <laughs> it's very compelling. Like, that's that's for real. I buy it. B7, Push. then Knight D7 just yep. wins the game. Lights out. Even Knight A6 wins, but Knight D7 gets the job done. And those pawns aren't going anywhere fast enough. They are not nearly quick enough. I used to play a game with my students, bishop versus three pawns. Just the bishop versus the three pawns. In this case, we have a knight that's coming back. <laughs> it's, uh, th there's no chance. There's no chance. You're not getting anywhere as the knight bounces back way too fast. Oh. And what did he do? What you had to bring the knight back? Is he still okay? All right. He's guessed that it's still Yo, okay. But that means Duna made a mistake because it said zeros for a hot second there. I, there was, I don't know. Maybe the, the, the engine was just a little too exuberant in that moment. But now look at this beautiful formation of knight and bishop shutting things down. Harmony, whoo, scary position for a second there. Was it true that it was a draw? I... Yeah, we'll, we'll bring this up on the analysis board as the next game gets started. But also, I think that Duda needs to stop playing this sharp Sicilian because Fabiano has the better preparation that we've been seeing in the last couple of games. We've been seeing it. We've been seeing it. But let's yes. see. So F4 must have been the move here to try to play F3 and get this pawn going. Boy, he should have brought his... I think he should have brought his bishop. But you know what? I'm not even sure what the right move is instead of c4, now that you look at it. I don't know. So c4. Yeah, because you can't. This is exactly the game you'd play. Once the pieces get to where they would get to, maybe knight d4. But knight d4 allows king e5. So bishop h1, f4 anyway, knight back. Not really sure what the move should have been. I'm gonna, that's going to bother me for a while until I figure out. Yeah, I guess the uh, you know the, there was something there. We'll maybe try to take a look at it later. But Duda, with two seconds on his clock, wasn't going to be able to play perfectly. Nor was Fabiano, who uh, had the advantage and let it slip for just a single move there. But Maurice, six six, Fabiano so far in the three plus one, he has two wins to one. And we should mention there had been precisely zero draws in this match. Incredible. No. <laughs> Great point, Robert. Incredible. Twelve games, twelve decisive games uh that's and by the way white won that game so the, the string of black victories has been righted somewhat yeah. as we've seen white win some games now wow what a match this is awesome stuff this is awesome stuff and you know it's dead even smarter chess had had duda with a, a, a game edge after this portion he's still yeah. on his way that possibly could do that but saying he's going to dominate in the bullet and this is going to be dangerous for Fabi because if that's true, Fabi needs some lead right now, like now. He needs to start picking them up and putting them down right now, get some wins. But they've traded punches in the last three games, haven't they? They have indeed. And I feel like Fabi feels that pressure because look at the openings he's choosing. He, he went away from the French. It wasn't working for him. Now he's going to the black side of these Italian games and he's going for the more aggressive lines with the pawn on G5. And that's a double-edged sword. On one hand, those pawns can help you launch an attack, maybe a G4 or King to G7 and F5 type of pushes. On the other hand, you're creating weak squares in front of your King and that can really backfire. And that's why Duda strikes in the center so quickly here. So funny though, because black had won so many games, and then White's just won three in a row. Yeah. In fact, White might have even won four in a row. Four. Yeah, the, the last game of the um, the right. five-minute was the one. five-minute was also a win. So White has won four in a row. We were like, look at Black. Black is rolling. And now White's just like, bing, bing. And by the way, this has also come after they changed up uh, a little bit in the opening. 
So Fabi changing from the French, this last game has not helped him. No, and in, in, in this game as well, he's down quite a bit of time here, right? 30 seconds, and his yes. king's on g7. There's some openness to it, but I'm not buying the evaluation right now. So sometimes, Maurice, we look at it as grandmasters, we're like, okay, that makes perfect sense. Here, it's still such a clogged, messy position, and yes. I see some potential for black eventually playing moves like h5 and h4 with an attack on the king side. So I do believe that white is probably slightly better, especially now that I'm looking at knight c4 ideas, but perhaps there are some potential for black, but now that I'm looking at knight c4, I'm actually just loving white's chances. And Robert, I'm going to say this too. I'm not seeing flow from Fabi. Let's yeah. check the time in this position. Four seconds, five seconds, six seconds, seven seconds. It's a three minute game. You just went into a deep thing. It's 10 seconds have passed. You're still thinking. You see how Duda just made his move in about four seconds? He's still at, he's still at it. It's still going. It's a three-minute game. You don't have 20-plus seconds to think on each move. I'm not feeling that flow. And he's still at it. Come on, dude. You're now under a minute and in crisis already. This is not what you should be doing in this kind of time situation. It's just This time control does, does punishes you. It punishes you for spending this kind of time. And soon he's going to start making mistakes. I don't care what move he comes up with. I don't care. It better be a genius move. It better be winning by force. <laughs> because F6, after all that thought, Ooh. that's not the kind. I mean, that's not it. That's yeah. not the move we thought you should be spending all that clock, burning all that clock for. This is my problem. And now night back, looking at those weak, juicy light squares, uh, mm, not feeling what he did. And, and look how quickly he played 93. A practical move quickly. And again, how many seconds have passed? Too before many. finally dropping his bishop back. Too many. But Maurice, I think this is going to show that what I considered a double-edged position is not really so double-edged after all. I mean, clearly, Duda has the advantage here. And White's pieces are superbly placed. Control of the light scores, as you mentioned. The king on g7 not looking so happy. So maybe I was looking for hope because I play the black side of the Italian and not so much the white side. But this is... Not Terrible. very pretty. Yeah. This is ugly. This is absolutely ugly. And here's the deal. When you trade off the dark square bishops, when you are playing a chess game, and you trade off your dark square bishops, that means you have an extra piece that can control the light square that your opponent doesn't have. In this case, black has a bishop on b6. Congratulations. But white has the bishop on b3 and the two knights. Those pieces can control light squares. So you want to dominate the light squares. And you see there that maneuver. Bring the knight... To F1 to put a pawn on G4, put a knight on G3. And if your opponent can't crush you on the dark squares, you're killing them. I mean, you're just killing them. So this is what Duda is looking for is ultra domination on the light squares where you can get rid of two pieces, but you're still going to be left with a problem when your opponent smashes you on the light squares. And here we see just a simple play by Duda. Although I will say, Maurice, this is the second time we've seen Duda play over there on the queen side when we've liked his potential on the king side. There was that French game uh, as well. So opening the B file, it's not bad for white, but it does give black some hope, some prospects to open the position up and say, hey, my king side is already weak. At least now I'll get some counterplay on the other side of the board. Yes, and call all the time, by the way, black has been hoping to be able to take on D4 and capture the pawn on E4. But he has to calculate it on every single move. And by the way, we've been talking all this time. And Duda has spent a lot mm -hmm. of time on the clock going down to only 29 seconds. But there goes the knight we talked about, the light square dominant piece. And that knight's going to end up on g3. There's nothing to do about it. The bishop on b6 cannot w come into the party. So now white is dominating. Black is desperate. h5, please give me a little bit of release so that I can go and guard the F5 square. He's ditched the pawn. Duda has won a straight pawn. This is going downhill fast. It certainly is, because it's just an extra pawn, clean. The light squares are still a problem. Oh, king on h6, queen g4, or rook h3 coming. I was trying to bring the queen to h3, but the rook is better. The king's stuck, and he wins the It's pawn. over. That was all about the light squares. That was all about the light squares in that position. And the clock times... Bobby spent so much time trying to think about the position that he just ended up losing easily. And Duda now has left the Sicilian. As you mentioned, Yaz. Oh, Yaz, excuse me. I love <laughs> Yaz so much. I, I, I got your name wrong. Sorry, Robert. Hest. Uh, yeah. As you mentioned, this 
the Sicilian was not working for him. You guessed right. He said, get out of there. And he's out, and he's now playing a Petrov. I'm going to have to start calling you Danny, I guess. But he has gone to the Petrov, which I believe is potentially a dangerous choice because the world's leading expert in the Petrov, that would be one Fabiano Caruana. So Correct. Duda himself is quite a promising Petrov player. He's an expert in it. But Fabi is the boss in the Petrov. It is true. It is true. Indeed, he is. And is that the fifth game in a row that White won? It is, yeah. I mean, White is making Black look completely silly at the moment. Like, just crushing. And this move, C4, hyper committal move, blocking your own bishop's diagonal, weakening the D4 square, giving a target on D6 square. I mean, you, you see a move like this under classical chess principles, and you think, what are you doing? doing like are you mad but the key is that he's after squares he's after specific squares he's after some control and he's saying that it's not going to be easy for white to take advantage of anything especially the move d5 happens and he's going to aim for his own play with queenside storm so white needs to prove something here i don't think it's easy at all I mean, especially d5 threatens bishop takes on a3 eventually it's going to be a queen a5 and Bishop A3 siding with a knight takes C3 tactic. Amazing anti-principled move. And by the way, knight D2 right now might get hit in the face by knight C3. Mm -hmm. like it Great does. Call. It's like bing, 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 wake up and smell the coffee. Uh, in a position like this, you're going to get murdered with the attack coming straight at you. So very dynamic, interesting idea. Giving up the weak square on D4 so that you can get this dynamic possibility for Black. And I think Black has real chances here to get B5 and A5 in, uh, or even even Queen A5, Bishop A3 looks possible. What's up with that? I guess you do have Knight D2 now because you put the Bishop on D4. So if we just go through this move by move, we'll analyze it a second. So we played B5, but Queen A5, Knight D2, Bishop A3. I'm not going to react by taking on A3. I'll take on E4 first, which also right. frees up the D2 square. And then I can take on A3 next because I've stolen your Yes, piece. indeed. But B5 is the other thematic idea we were mentioning, and it's on the board. And he's headed places. He's headed places with this move. With this whole plan. It's not just the move itself. It's the whole plan. White's attack looks ridiculously slow. Like, what is, where is the target? How does white hit black? How? You, you don't. G3? Yeah, that's, he's not going for an attack. I guess he's trying to play bishop G2 at some point and go after D5. And what's going on here, Maurice, and what we're trying to elaborate for people is that black has the immediate position it's like that kind of energy that you have to use now or else white is going to be better the potential of the position seems to favor white this knight can go to f1 to e3 if the queens if you just threw them off the board all mm. of a sudden we'd like white's position but mm -hmm. with the idea of a5 b4 that's what is allowing black to claim a good position indeed and the only weakness is the d5 pawn but it's not under any siege as yet Knight f5. I, he must not have liked going after a5, maybe because of bishop c5. Maybe that was what was tickling his brain that stopped him from doing it. So now he's played knight f5. And now we said a5 is coming. a5, b4. In chess, you need breaks. You need breaks. And that's the break. That's the money break. b4. So it's not hard to figure out the kind of plan that black was after. And that was it. Getting that b4 move in. He might even be able to play it right now, but he has to calculate knight to c6 does he want to give that move that's a big move to give and he's decided nope i'm not giving it yet i'm going to play this one he also has to calculate any trickery like knight takes on f7 nonsense you got to look at but thankfully bishop takes is ready and nothing happens there either so what is fabi going to do now because he has no play he's just bereft of any moves like devoid of possibilities here b4 is coming his king is about to be at pride open i'm sorry but this looks like eight six about to happen for, for duda oh this looks great for him he's shown a great understanding of hey my attack is coming first let's not trade pieces because my opponent's gasping for air the 95 that looks good but it's not actually threatening anything and b4 is what's all about fabi dipping to 30 seconds and below Duda still over a minute on the clock. Another fantastic showing here for the Polish number one. 
amazing and queen h who h o what h o y like <laughs> what are we doing that that's was there a reason to give him a, a free tempi and now he's dropped back but the a4 pawn it looks man it looks juicy if we could get at it but that knight is guarding the the chicken house right now how do you get at this this guy because you got to break through on that side you don't he's played rook b8 by the way even if he didn't know exactly how to do it rook b8 is a smart move right they're gr one of the greatest moves you can have in chess greatest ideas robert you know this kind of trickery make a move that threatens nothing it just builds your position yeah and you can play b3 at some point it does actually have a clear purpose let's barrel down the b file right yeah, it, it's overall purpose, but not necessarily a concrete one. It's just yes. an improving move, and it says, I'm not throwing anything concrete. It's on you to find a move. And your opponent has to look. Now, see, he took – what? Whoa. Yeah, he's getting all Whoa. active here, but rook takes Whoa. d4 comes to my mind. And watch out for this black king getting in trouble with knight g4 uh, at some point. See, he got a little concrete there, and I was, I was lauding the fact that he was not being concrete, and then he got concrete. <laughs> and this, this could give some chances. Knight g4 is not possible, though. Knight – c6 mm -hmm. queen protects c3 importantly and then try to yes. the diagonal man i want my knight over there on the dark and the clock the maurice side. the clock duda down to only eight seconds and now he's in trouble on the clock this last move the knight looks like it does not and he's taking oh, he, the he's take pawn. on c4 he wanted to take on c4 the bishop was pinned there and but are you for real what? This is oh no wow, this is crazy talk and knight c4, and that's going to trade everything off if he takes on c4 and takes again and plays a oh, check. Oh, but his bishop d5 of rook d8 saves the day. But he's trading everything off, but white has enough material. Yeah, white certainly does. White could play bishop d5, then push, mm -hmm. or bring the king up, and white is perfectly fine. Yeah, white should be okay here. Black, the preferred side, because the pass pawn's not going anywhere. That's the thing. You have a bishop, black can just blockade in the dark squares very easily. And unfortunately, the rook by itself is not going to be able to win the pawns. But time, time is what's important. Time here. is the whole thing right now. Is they're both down? Can they manage this position? White is fine, but can he win? Is there a chance? And this last move by well, he's got to be careful. Oh, key four coming. The position and giving White the chance to play f3, king e4. When he's going to play it, he's going to uh -oh. put his king on f5. This is winning. This got oh, why did he play king g6? This looks winning, but actually, I don't see how to make any progress. That's the there's, frustrating thing. There's right? no way to make progress. There's nobody who can break the dark squares. This is going to be a draw. Yeah, it's like you need black to have to lose a move somehow, but there's always rook c8, rook c7. No, that was the key win. move. He tried to trick him. King d6 so that he can play king c5, Robert. You saw that sneaky action Bobby tried to do? He tried yeah. to get the king over to d4 square. Now he's guarded c5. Now here comes the king. King's going to come around. Wait. He's going to challenge him to know exactly what to do. I think king d8 is going to solve the problem, though. Here he comes again, and now it's another Don't switch. play king of five. Don't play king of five. It's rookie five check. So he goes back to d4. Nah, Oof. it's just drawn right now. It's still going. One second increment is keeping Fabi alive, but now he definitely cannot make progress. This is completely done. Yeah. Completely done. No way to make any progress anyway. The only person who can make progress is black, honestly. If, uh, you know, you can attack the bishop and either win the c6 or g4 pawn, that could spell some trouble, but... Fabi, uh, you know what? I agree with you. If I were black, I play rookie one. Is there a danger to playing rookie one? No, like zero danger to playing rookie one, right? Absolutely no. Now, bishop f5, bishop d7 was the easiest way to hold, but this also does the trick. So, okay, the first draw that was the first draw. Yeah, we've seen a draw finally. Are we sure we're watching Super Grandmasters play? Be and look, Petro for Fabi. <laughs> he says, Hey, you thought you were knew what you were doing? My turn. <laughs> they avoided the Petrov this whole time, and the Petrov has that re reputation sometimes of being just a solid opening for black. Uh, but it's been sharp over the years. Fabi has infused some life into it, for sure. But wow, this has been an amazing match. It's so close. I mean, it's so close. Fabi took the sprint, took the lead. Duda sprinted back, took his lead. Fabi's still punching, and now it's a one-point match. This is what you want to see. Close, dynamic, and by the way, very few blunders. It's true. It's true. We're it's... playing blitz, and it's very few blunders. Is this what we expect to see throughout the rest of these matches? What an amazing, entertaining set of games we're in for. Instead of matches, we're going to be in for as the speech at championships continue. 
certainly the case. And right now, Duda spending a ridiculous amount of time trying to figure this position out. I guess he's looking, can I push this pawn to d5 and free up the d4 square for my knight? Is there something going on in the e-file with my rook already attacking the knight and uh, having a good scope here? But he's spending so much time, and I don't think you can afford to do that in a three-minute game. I completely agree. And then you end up playing the move knight c3 after all that thought. And what's curious is Fabi probably would have played instantly if knight c3 were on the board, and now Fabi's thinking. I find that fascinating. Sometimes players get into each other's rhythms. Like one person does something, the other copies. And here, Fabi, with only 17 seconds having elapsed, he needs to find the next move quickly. And he's played his knight to the B4 square. What an interesting... I I'm not going to say I'm a fan of this move. <laughs> I think you and I both have the same reaction. Like That looks interesting, but it's always a bad adjective because... Well, he does bring the knight to d3, and he can take on c1, but that bishop wasn't really helping the queen take c1. I'm, I'm, surprised, by, I'm <laughs> surprised by a3. I thought he would have played bishop e3, yeah, and that, and that way knight d3 had no punch. That's what I thought. Uh, but, all right, they went for something different. And, again, it's all about the clock. Fabi with a 40-second lead, and thereabouts. Two bishops as well, an isolated pawn on d4. White is going to fight for activity. He fight his hardest. Maybe he might even play d5 if given a chance. So white has maximum activity for the isolated pawn, while black has a solid structure. d5 you know, seems like the only break, Robert. Yeah, I agree. And this knight on d6 is the real hero, because the f7 square is what white wants to target with this bishop on b3, but the knight covers it. And knight e5 looks to increase the pressure. Please take me on e5 so I can take with my pawn. No uh -oh. longer an isolated pawn and now an attacker. But of course, nope. black will not be capturing there. And if you play d5, I'll push through to c5. My bishop on f6 will be happier, and I'll try to use a queenside majority. A knight is the best blockader against the pawn. <laughs> and I was going to say... This the, after saying all that, this calls for a Judith Polgar G four, and Judith did this when she was maybe sixteen or seventeen years old. Is the first time I saw this idea G four in the Isolani position, and man, when I saw it, it, it came as a shock back in the day. G four now is kind of like those. Yeah, everybody plays G four, but Robert, when you were gay high, <laughs> when you were first coming up to me as a was it a nine year old? Yep. The, the first time we met. That's when those kind of moves were considered crazy. You can't play G4 in this kind of position, but they started doing all kinds of G4 in every position. And here we see it was something standard for Duda, but he spent so much time doing it. He's only got 45 seconds left on the clock. And just like our first interaction, you know, when you play G4, you're signing those autographs because that's a dazzling move often. But here, Where's the follow-up? You know, it's like, I got G4 in. The bishop just sat back on G6, is hanging Somebody, out there. You're, you're speaking quickly. Fabi responded with G5. Yeah, because he's that's, a boss that's himself. The, that's the important point. He's G4 free. was meant by G5. What, uh, what? Like, that's a kind of double, double, double take. And the bishop on G6, the pawn on G5, holding the position together very nicely. Those dark squares not going anywhere. No H4 threat, no F4 threat that black has to worry about clock maurice i wasn't even looking at that but look yes. how much time fabi has and he's in his petrov even though it's a sharp very what just Whoa, taking bishop g5 you can't do that you taking can't do oh wait you can't play bishop no, no, g5 you can't play bishop g5 <laughs> but there's something wrong there's oh my god i That's see funny. h6 as a move oh what a calm move threatening bishop g5 okay okay I, it's funny i was I like bishop... i know you know, bishop g5 was in your head because you saw you saw the uh by the, the way no, it was. It would, no, it, it didn't work. Possible. But I saw the eval bar go crazy, so I was like, "Oh, Bishop G five wins the material." But of course, the rooks in the was in the path. Bishop H four right. is possible. The bottom line is Duda has six point four seconds left to play the rest of this game. Now it's time for Fabi to find a couple of nice little trickery type moves, and the game will be over. There is a blunder waiting, and you just need to find the right couple of moves now. Spend fifteen seconds. Duda is suffering at the board right now. He's suffering. He, 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 he doesn't, he, he just wants you to move it. Look at his last move. This is the kind of move I'm talking about. It does nothing. I mean, it really does nothing. There's no threat, right? But suddenly Duda has to be like, uh, uh, what, wait, what? Uh, and there goes the knight. It's going to go, the, and, and he's got to find a move. 
Now, I Fabi know. needs to find an incisive move that scares his opponent. Bishop g5, not sure that was it. The queen now backing up to f2. The f7 pawn is under heavy pressure. And h4 also is a threat because the queen doesn't actually have access to the diagonal. Agreed. I don't know. Fabi's last couple of moves did not help him. He's turned, the game seems to have turned around. Queen, queen to d6, allowing h4, bishop back. And H5, and boy, there is serious pressure coming down the F file right now. And it looks like there may be a sacrifice. you got to play Bishop H7. What are you thinking about? Yeah, I don't know what he's taking sign for. Take on F7. This is what he was worried about, a sacrifice on Whoa. this square as the knight. But this looks, this, what's Can going on? Trade? Can you just trade queens? Could have taken on F2 if he wanted, but this, okay, he's still hanging in here. Okay, this is, this is great for Black that he got out of it. With this kind, of no damage at all. Again, the seconds, two seconds left for Duda, and Fabi just needs to find some simple, simple moves. This last one, I'm not a fan of. Bishop allowing takes the opposite color. Rookie Bishop. one, rookie two. No, but rook f two. Ah, uh, rook f two says there, but you trade rooks and probably are better in the same game. King f six to g five coming. Yeah, this is good for Black. This is Knight definitely dominated. good for Black. Knight is better here, but it's not over. It's not over. It's bad, but it's not completely over. And now the knight headed to the e5 square. And king g5 should be played, right? Not to... Oh, oh, oh wait, yeah, wait. c4 Tempo. was hanging. Tempo. And now you can't guard everybody. And pawns are going to drop. Pawns are going to drop like flies now. Fabi is going to win this one. And the match is going to be tied. Incredible. Extraordinary. And it's the domination of a knight against a bishop. We hear the bishop pair, how strong it is. Pieces that, that can go on both sides of the board, but a knight can go from color to color, and a bishop has to stay on its own. So here, be careful, be careful Robert. Be careful. Uh oh, uh, I'm not. I'm not liking this technique. No, I'm, I'm not, not either. This technique. Okay, knight takes just. That doesn't matter. He's got it. That's not going to matter if he can trade off the light square bishop. It's a draw. Fabi has blown it. Oh my God! Fabi he has blown it. This is a drawn position. No, I don't know. The king is pretty far away. So if black can shoulder that king out, can't you try to... No, I guess you're not in no, time. this is a technical draw. It's just yeah. a question of whether or not he'll blunder it. But this is a technical draw uh, as you cannot... You can't block. you got to block properly. You've got to block more than once. And right. right now he's trying to shoulder him. So at some point, the problem is your king has to come back to be able to bring the knight to the G4 square. And here we yeah. go. He's going to bring his king back. Had to. And now... Just bring your piece take over. It, take it. And, and kill King's it. And that's a draw. Fabi blew it. Look at him shaking his head. Blew a winning position. That is a huge miss. A huge miss for Fabi not winning that game. You know what we've learned, Maurice, is the Petrov is always a draw. That's what we've <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> they had no draws until the two Petrov games. And both of those games had... At first, it looked good for Black with uh, Fabi there. Then, all of a sudden, due to turn the tables, but he had no time to figure everything out. Yeah, that was terrible for Fabi, that not, not winning that game. That was really bad. That was really bad. And he was disgusted at himself because that's a huge point that he tossed away. And they're down to what looks like the last two games of the three-minute action. We're only Unless there's a horrific blunder early, and we have not seen that in this match. I think we've seen it once. I think there was one bad game where Fabi had that horrible white Sicilian. Remember that game? Yes. And and there was that other game where Duda was blacking that Sicilian when he went B5 and just... I mean, oh, the game yes. didn't end that quickly, but it You're was right. over. You're right. Good first. point. So there were two Sicilians where they blundered. But otherwise, this has been a quality match. This has been a dogfight, these two players. And just a small edge for Duda at the moment. Fabi really wanted to be at... Could have been at... Seven and a half, seven and a half after that last game should have been. Now he's going to have to do it all over again. And I have to give a shout out to our top guessers from the last game because I see an international master, feeding master, two more IMs and a GM all playing guess the move, trying to win either the cash prize or if you're not a premium member, win some premium membership. So great to see that. And Maurice, I mean, speaking of great to see, I feel like Fabi – from the white side of this position, the two bishops are stronger than we've seen in the past. And look at the light squares. That's going to tell the tale of this game is this light square bishop and good control over the vacated uh, squares that Black has created. I hear you, Robert. I am trying to figure out how exactly, though, white makes the pressure work on the light squares. I, you, you need to help me out here because I just don't see, uh, although that last move, I'm uh, not a fan. 
the threat is night. It was night takes at four and queen takes. I'm just curious how white. Oh, if white gets the if white gets the d five, by the way. Right. I'm just. I, trying to, that was the. Oh, it didn't even know. work. That's funny. It didn't even work yet, but that was the plan. <laughs> right. Right. It didn't quite quite work it. If this bishop gets to if this bishop gets to d five, then we're talking. Right. Queen e four. What a move. Okay, what a cool. move. Interesting. Interesting and strange, to be honest, because you're after queen d7, you get nothing on the next move. You do get nothing. You're you're gonna move your queen now because now black is threatening bishop g5. He didn't move. Isn't there a bishop g5, bishop e3 siding somewhere? Uh yes. I like that bishop as much as I like your bishop on d5. I mean I I guess the bishop in d5 actually puts pressure on. Well, no bishop in d5 anymore, but pawn's there. I don't get it. If I put I a bishop, if I put a bishop on e3, why didn't he put his bishop on e3? You're asking questions that I honestly don't have the answer to because bishop to e3 looked correct. Just imagine this position. Same position, but with a bishop on e3 saying no <laughs> progress for you. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> why wouldn't you just put it there? I don't get. He's I, gonna I, make a draw anyway, right? No, nah, this is a, no. But bishop on e three. I'm playing the position. This I'm making a draw. Right. This okay. is just a draw now. This is nothing in the Petrov. Well, we said there might be two more games, only. But with this kind of position, quick draw, there might be two more games after this as they've drawn. It's true. Unless this is a very long game, we will get two more. And just remind everybody of how Jan Kristaps Duda even made his way to the speed chess championship. He won the Invitational. He beat Sergei Karyakin. In fact, it was quite a lopsided affair. And before Karyakin, he beat Jeffrey Zhang and also the wonderful time international master Min Lei. So a very strong performance on him. He said, I'm going to make it to the speed chess championship. Here he is right now. He is the white side of this position. He is up eight and a half, seven and a half against Fabiano. And Maurice, we're getting down towards the wire. So in the home stretch here, we know Duda is the favorite on paper in the bullet. Does Fabi have a chance or must he strike right now in the final blitz games? Well, he's got to be even, I think. He doesn't want to be down and then have to win in the bullet. That doesn't sound right. It doesn't sound logical. It sounds like he'll be crushed. But he does have his chances and he's been playing well. No, I'm not sure about his, his bullet speed. We'll see that. By the way, we talked about seeing our first draw. Are we seeing our first D4 opening of the match? Yeah, we are. But they played E4 in in every single game. We saw 16 games go by, and one E4 was the move of choice. There was no C4, there was no Knight F3, and there was no this, D4, that we have now seen for the first time, as Duda said, it's time to get away from that boring Petrov. I could be bored in something else. Why be bored in the Fabi's super duper Petrov? Nice. It's kind of interesting because Fabi played the French. He won three games in the French before he had to get out of it after losing a couple. And now he's headed to the Petrov and he hasn't lost any games, has he? No, he did lose in the Petrov. No, he sh should have. But did he lose a game? Or he. No, he should have lost. No, he should have lost. Liquidated, yeah. Right. So, so now we're talking. Uh, Duda said, enough. Fabi's good in the... That's enough. Let, let's get somewhere else and see what happens. But this one-point lead is big for, for Duda. I think that's going to really matter. And uh, this position is... This is what we call a GM grind, where White says, I have no losing chances. It's basically two results. And Black says, I don't believe my one single weakness on D5 is enough. This should be draw with correct play, especially in classical. But we're not playing classical. Will Black be able to make all the precise moves? Or does Fabi understand these positions enough in his fingertips, Robert, that he's going to draw easily? You know, Maurice, this is one of those openings that I do not recommend for quicker time controls because Black has his isolated pawn. You know you're tied down to the defense of that forever, and you're not actually targeting anything of whites. Look at this queen on d4. It's a marvelous piece, keeping the rook on a8 stuck to the pawn on a7 putting pressure on the D5 square, protecting B2 for good measure. So I just think it's very difficult for Fabi to play. And you're right that if this were a classical game, Fabi's so strong, I wouldn't be too worried about his chances. I don't know, something about it just feels so easy for White to play and not so easy for Black to deal with. Sure it is. Sure it is. Very easy for White to play. And now White offers an end game, which Black will probably accept. And he has done so. 
these are just the types that GMs at this level, as you mentioned, there's no counterplay for black, but GMs at this level feel like there's only one weakness, the right pieces get traded off, I have no worries. Maybe a move like F6 and put the bishop back on E6. It's just, just I mean, of course, this knight is headed to D4. So you'll see the knight probably repurpose itself. E5 is not a real square for this piece. Rook C8 is inviting more draws as well. So you have to be very careful there. Uh, it's just, just a drawish type position. Rook C7 on the board. Okay. And look at this. Giving up Giving B7. Up the pawn on b7 because of mass liquidation do you buy this there might be some back rank tactics with knight c5 coming that's what i'm worried about for white because uh, if i could take on first i'll kick your knight from e5 with an f6 in timely fashion and then i'll take your bishop on d3 and your rook will be overloaded defending the bishop and the first rank i know that may that's be hard slick. to visualize that's slick i'm gonna say that's real slick uh Something like this right and i get uh mm -hmm. but is it true it's slick, but is it true? I just want to know because this, this, this you know, is a knight g6. You get a check. I go away. You take. I take. Take and, and take, and then you say my two pawns versus your two pieces. Mm -hmm. Well, well, well. Very fancy. Very fancy. And just to remind everybody, the back rank is what we're focused on. So the rook can't take the knight. But as we get back to the game, rook c1 was played, knight d6, and Maurice. Now I'm definitely going to say you are right. The pieces are coming off. White is still a smidgen better, but that's all that it is. And I've no, seen it's not, uh, this is not enough. Not <laughs> no, enough. it's not. I've seen players, um, you know, just win these games with the white side. Irina Crush is one player who is, excels at these types of positions. I remember from the 2018 Olympiad against Harika Dronavali, she gave Harika the isolated pawn and then just squeezed her. But this is not it. Once the pieces come off, mass simplification, this should be a hold. You want a pair of rooks. You just want a pair of rooks. Now, the only good news uh, for Fabi, the real good news, other than the draw, I should say, it's more than just a little bit of news, is that he's got a lot of time advantage on the clock. Duda couldn't find anything in a position where he would be slightly better. And Fabi at the moment has a small time edge. He's going to just keep playing. G5, you know, you start weakening, make some weakening moves. White is going to think about beating you. Here comes the king first. All right, let's get the bishop out of there. Mm -hmm. and I think that king is going to start marching. Here it goes. It can go beyond b4, though, folks. This is the problem. Because when you play king b4, b6 will be playable. But well, be ready because knight c6 will be... Did he just play knight b5? He did. Well, that's the end of that. We don't have to talk about this game anymore. <laughs> to trade knights off. Uh, that's it. That's all king she wrote. King, king d6. Although, and how do you protect this pawn? Because if I go bishop b3 and you go bishop here, I have e4 with a pin pawn. That's a point. That's a point. Uh, hmm. Maybe it's like bishop f5 to e6 or something like that, so that way the king protects it. But still, it's like, it's quite I mean, tricky. you can play bishop f7 and bishop to Right, e6 same idea. Well. Yeah. Okay. Oh, h3 is his idea. Oh, but then g4. He just blundered. Oh, he, he blundered just, g4. He just blundered. He just blundered a position. He should have stayed solid. He just blundered. And seven seconds for Duda. And Fabi realizes that he just absolutely blundered the position. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. He just blundered. And now he just has to give up this pawn. He cannot trade it to an endgame. And he's just down a pawn for absolutely no reason. And here comes F4 and E5, both coming quickly. Is it completely winning? It looks it looks like it's still... Well, but you, once you start pushing pawns on the queen side... We might start thinking we might be winning again, but still, it looks obvious to play for e5, Robert, but it's not easy for white to break through after this happens. Although I like the bishop on f5. That was nice, actually. It just shows the limitation of a bishop, right? If I put my king on a dark square, you can't kick my king off it. And I wanted to bring up something important, that the a8 square matches the light square bishop. Yes. Because there are times where you sacrifice your bishop and make a draw with a rook pawn, but not here, because the bishop and the corner match. So e5, he's going to have to go for it. But then there's no progress to be made, at least that's what dude is thinking, because the king sits on e7, there are no points of infiltration for the white king. That's the key. That's the key to the defense. You're going to have to be able to trade off the bishop somehow once you play e5. And you see him making a lot of moves instantly. Hopefully he's not pre-moving a blunder in one of these moves as Fabi has just got b7 and b d7 and b5 on his mind as his repetition 
and no chance to win. Look at that. He made it. From what I've seen, Duda seems very comfortable in those critical moments, the last seconds. It seems like he will have the edge here. This is not going to be about opening theory. The great bullet meisters like Hikaru Nakamura's of the world, they know it's about playing good enough moves quickly. And also, when the critical moments happen, who blundered? There's no way to predict it. Clearly, Duda has the, got the edge from his experience at this. But will Fabi be able to pull it off? Only time will tell. Certainly will be the case. And while we're talking about monsters and bullet chess, for those of you who subscribe to the chess channel here, enjoy the second match of the primetime SmackDown. And please pray for me because I'm playing Daniel Narditsky, who is a monster at bullet. We'll be right back. I'll take, I'll take the first defeat. Nothing like I'm a not, comeback. I'm not, I don't generally underestimate my opposition. That was, uh, that was a fluke. Yeah, I feel like there's nothing like a good comeback story, so I'm happy just to come back to be where we are right now. Did I hear the word comeback? Yeah. Oh, night G5. But, but I've been here for years. Is this a line? I have no idea. Dude, you're asking me if something's a real opening. <laughs> I, did, I'm, I, this is the one thing where I'm in the same boat as you. I never, I, I'm always asked. Okay, I'm going to be honest. My position I don't, looks Robert, absolutely horrible. I don't think this is a line. <laughs> no, <laughs> this looks say. really bad. <laughs> um, can I get a redo? A redo? Yeah. Uh, in, how about in game? I uh, Can I suggest game three as a redo? Uh, this feels really bad. I'm going to be honest. I think I'm gonna be losing like three pawns here. Castle? That B3 pawn is like the kebab I had yesterday. That looks really good. Yeah, my position looks real horrible. All right, let's take this guy. Can you just leave me alone? I, I feel like I'm about 20 seconds. I played a terrible <laughs> opening. You asked me. The thing is, when you asked me if it was a real though. opening, you asked me if it was a real opening. It just threw me off because I knew That's it wasn't real, like jumble. and it felt like you were being serious, and that just made it more insulting. I see. No, I was because I, you know, we never know these days with these young players uh, playing all okay. sorts of First stuff. First, you said young player. You're talking to me. So, wh what do you want? Queen d7, man. I think I'm losing now. I, I don't really know how to play end games. Oh, and you won a pawn back. Oh my god. Yeah, I did. I'm, I did. So you I'm know blundering what, left and right. I have no time, and I'm. Oh my god. I'm <laughs> you're just you're just loving the. <laughs> I was like, okay, if I'm gonna lose on time, maybe he'll like do some silly pre-move and I'll get a quick checkmate. Right, I need a group. I need a group here. Regroup.
looking really ominous, especially given that he's down on time. But this is the Magnus Carlsen squeeze. Um, wow. And, and knowing you don't get many winning positions against Magnus Carlsen, nobody does. And Carlos playing in front of hundreds of people. Imagine being in his shoes right now. I mean. Wow. Unbelievable. Up by four games. Oh, I can resign, yeah. Carl knows it. It started with 16 players, and uh, it all came down to one man, Magnus Carlsen, who won. This is a pretty great matchup. I know people love Hikaru Nakamura. Hikaru is the favorite for a reason. He's a beast, an absolute monster. It has been Hikaru's Speech Chess Championship this 2018, Hikaru Nakamura. The overall one seed takes it home in the Speech Chess Championship. Honestly, these guys have played each other so much. Obviously, this is a rematch of last year's SCC final. What a finish, by the way. I mean, that's been the story of the match. Hikaru Nakamura has just kind of outswindled, out tricked, and out calculated Wesley in the critical moment. Oh, dude, that's a nice move. Wesley's shaking his head. Hikaru wins the one. He's going to draw this game. I can't believe it. What just that happened? Is unbelievable. Hikaru Nakamura holding that position. And we return. Young Christoph Duda has a one-game lead, but we want to remind everybody to get involved with Guess the Move. A game is selected at random, and the top scorers, the top guessers in that game will receive cash prizes. If you are not a premium member, you will receive premium memberships. Here is a recent game played, and wow, 106 guesses. That's a ton. But just remind everybody what's happening next. It will be the bullet portion. And if the match ends up in a tie, we want to remind our viewers that there will be four additional bullet games as a mini match. And if it's still tied after that, we get to Armageddon. White gets five minutes. Black gets three minutes. No increment, but Black gets a win if the game ends as a draw. So draw odds for Black. So decided by the Chess.com Blitz rating. And that should be Jan Christoph Duda in the case of a tie. And Maurice, we're going to bring up the Smarter Chess predictions one more time. Got to get your thoughts here. Do you really think that Duda is about to take this bullet seven to three. I don't know. I don't know. Smarter Chess has been right, at least with the first match. That is the five minute portion. We could say not correct in the second portion. Gave a five, five, but it was really four, four was the score. So we can say, oh, Smarter Chess didn't get it right that time. But so what? Smarter Chess has been very right in terms of the differential. And so I'm not going to go against that right now. And I think that the way Duda has handled himself, Fabi could be in trouble. I agree with you there. Duda has been great under the duress of time trouble. Fabi has had some moments of his own, but it seems like Duda handles the mouse speed and the complications better when the seconds are dwindling. So with that being said, we're about to have liftoff here in the bullet. And the first couple of games, I think, are of the incredibly important for Fabi. He cannot go down three games and then hope to go on a streak. So, hey, we have a Petrov. We do have a Petrov. Fabi must be happy to see a Petrov on the board. His instinct are great. He prepared this for the World Championship against Magnus. So you will see some of the lines that he thinks are the most dangerous lines you can play. And are we frozen or something? Because Queenie 2 has caused Black to stop and think for about 10 seconds in a bullet game. <laughs> I mean, are you mad? Yeah, what's no going way? on here? Come on, dude, you got to move. I don't get it. There must be something wrong, Robert. He spent all that time to finally play B6. That's that's crazy. And now Fabi should just definitely move instantly since he saw no danger there. Knight D4, G pawn is not hanging as far as Fabi is concerned. You can have it. Bishop takes on G2. Yeah, you want it? Take it again. He's giving away even the H pawn as well, Robert, saying you want any of those, you can have them because I'm sacking to get at your king. He certainly is, but I like how Duda has responded to getting his knight to c5. It's not even about taking this bishop so much as activating the piece. And bishop b5 trying to get into the c6 square, it looks like. But is he in time? Because bishop c6, bishop takes d4, Maurice, that will win a piece for black. 
Yeah, what is he doing? Well, actually, he could take back with a C pawn, and he, True. I mean, with a D pawn, the C pawn be, becoming a D pawn, and then hit the knight on C5. So it doesn't quite win material. It doesn't look possible to play bishop to C6. This is the kind of thing where you got to be instinctive and just make moves. And here we see a trade, trade. Bishop takes on C5. The pin at the end. White did not lose a pawn, but the game did fizzle out quite rapidly into what looks like a bishop opposite color position. And now Queen G4. Allowing rook to e4. And now queen ca trading. I'm a bit surprised by that. I liked your rook e4 move, and here it comes. But Maurice, we even take note of this. Look at the ratings next to their names. Duda is 32-23. Fabi is 29-24. That is a 300-point gap. However, most of that will be in no increment, right? They're playing a lot of pure bullet and winning on the clock. Duda is at least. I don't think Fabi plays too much bullet chess. Right. So no problem here for Fabi. I mean, this game is just drawn mainly but it's bullet it's equal i should say but it's bullet chess anything could happen uh, although i don't think anything's going to happen here as the trades continue uh, another trade and this one looks like it will be another petrov draw robber petrov not proving to be anything in this match and let's talk match strategy for a second if you're duda don't you play this out there are just over 27 minutes remaining in the match Keep this going. Why agree on a draw? It still has some life left in it, and black can never lose. Indeed. And here, this last move by white was interesting, uh, but now it's dead. Now it's <laughs> de deader than dead. Although there is a king trying to get to g3, but you have to you have to respect white's uh, white's f pawn. If you live up, if you give up f6, only ten seconds left, and he's done it. Mm -hmm. He's gone for it and oh. push. Okay, take this one. What did he do? He's losing. Dude is what winning did he this. Do? He just blundered. Yeah, he did. Bobby has just blundered a critical pawn. Is it completely Wait. lost? It looks bad, but it may not be totally lost, Robert. These endings can be no notorious for being drawn, but it looks like he is lost. It looks bad. The only thing he could have going for him, I would say, is that this is the wrong pawn, but he can't win this H pawn. If that H pawn were gone, Bishop takes G3 would just be a draw, but you're not winning the H pawn, so... A loss. Wait a minute, but he just gave up a second pawn. five. Yep. He just gave so, up a second pawn. This is lost. Yeah, he resigned. That's just lost. Incredible. And this is what we're worried about with Fabi, that in critical moments, he'll make mistakes like that one when he should draw, end up losing a game. That's a big point to donate. It certainly was. And, you know, I was kind of implying it when I was asking you, should do to play on? He couldn't lose the game, but Fabi showed that he could. And now it's a two-game spread, and we are getting D4 once more. Yes, indeed. And that was critical. Fabi making a mistake there. And it could really just go downhill very quickly if Fabi is not careful. It could just it could just get bad. So he needs to stabilize. He needs to get some wins in. He just lost with the white pieces. Duda must be feeling fantastic about the situation right now. He certainly is. And the good news for Fabi is that Duda is choosing double-edged positions. I and mean, look at this, H5 trying to go H4. And White is trying to get this E pawn going and open up both the E and the F files. Just blast the position open for your bishops. But Fabi has to be happy that the position is not just dry and he can't push for more, even though Duda has spent no time at all, Maurice. The guy is just in good shape in the bullet. Also, these guys have been here before, right? They've seen positions like this one. And they know what to do. And here we see H3 by Fabi was intending that queen. Really? What a move. Getting the G file. Does uh, he have a way to blast through King H1 and Rook G1, Robert? No, Rook H Rook H8 is coming. So you do have to be mindful of that. I'm looking at Queen G5. Is there going to be a sacrifice on the square? Perhaps there isn't. Maybe we're too focused on g6 but it does look promising of course the bishop d2 i'm happy to see if i'm yeah. black for sure a quiet move and now avoiding the trade of queens but man begging the guy to sack on g6 mm -hmm. just daring him i wow that is that looks so scary but the knight guards the knight i was talking about this knight on c6 guards the b4 square so there's no bishop to b4 at any point but now with the knight there's no threat, no bishop c6 threat, but what does black do? And he played rook h5. Black is looking much more solid, but in the clock situation is about even a4. It seems like aimless moves on the queen side, but he's making sure he's not going to hang that pawn later in the game. And Maurice, I'm looking at rook takes e3 at some point for Fabi just to trade off some pieces, get in double-edged position. Fabi needs to score some points, and he's up on the clock. 
the threat is knight b3, Robert. Knight b3, nice. and that bishop has nowhere to go to maintain. Wow. So he had to go for it. He played e4, what? but this looks like it just blunders material. And consistently yeah. so. Rook f6 and more trades for Fabi. He is winning this position. There's no question about it, but can he pull it off? With the time being an issue, a knight g5. Man, when knights get to g5, you got to watch three. out. Oh, it's, I think it's check. I was like, knight of three wins the queen. But he's yeah, but knight of three is threatened right now. Knight of three is definitely threatened, and he had to back up, and it's up to Fabi now. Knight check, and now this this king is frozen. There could be mates anywhere, but can he get over there? And he's decided just to play queen f4, trade off, and go into what looks to be a superior endgame but I'm not sure he wants to trade off rooks. I mean, trade off piece, minor pieces and just keep rooks on the board. So this last move, oh, nice. There was a mate threat, Robert. Yep. And that's why uh, now Dude is trying to push this pawn, but the king is in time to get the dark squares. Whoops, sorry, that was my mistake. I, not now it I mean, isn't. Yeah, you know, I, I made the move by mistake. The king oh, is I on see. d8, okay. <laughs> block in pawn. But, oh, watch out for... No, there's nothing to watch out for. So this is weird. I keep seeing the eval bar jump up and down. Black obviously was much better, but now the king is cut off on d8, and that exactly. pawn d6 can't be approached. No, this doesn't look winning anymore. This, and he's played this move hoping to tr tr chase the bishop away, but this looks like it should just be drawn. Uh -oh. Wait, he can get into e6. Uh-oh. Oh, no. No. And White suddenly picks off the pawn on G6 and is going to push his H pawn. And that F5 pawn is dead as well. Absolutely atrocious collapse by Fabi with the second sticking down, Robert. And he can be mad at you because every time you say it looks like it's going to be a draw, he loses. So those are the words that Fabiano does not want to hear ever again. No more draws. The problem is he's not cool under the clock ticking pressure when it comes down to five or six seconds left. That's when Duda is winning these games. Duda is super cool in the critical moments, knows exactly what to do to manage things, and Fabi just seems to be collapsing every time. He certainly is. He was winning that position, right? He was up a pawn, he was attacking Duda, and then somehow he liquidated into this rook and bishop ending, and the rooks got traded, and he couldn't win. And not just that, he lost. It's one thing not to win the game. It's another oh, to then go and to lose. Lose? It. Yeah. To let the guy's king just march into your house and take all your cookies? That was not cool. That was terrible. And now Fabi, desperate to just get a draw, but I'm not sure. You know, we've been talking about, as you said, Robert, I'm not sure he's going to be getting any freebies. Wait, that bishop? Oh, and that didn't get trapped. Wow, that was close. It was really close. And the worst part about this position, Maurice, is it's closed. So Fabi can play. Now he can definitely play. This pawn on b4 is a clear target. And the king can try to come in. But that's why I like Duda's move g4. The king can't keep running as he needs to stay attached to the f2 pawn. Not that it has anywhere to go from d3. But there's a bishop. Isn't there a bishop to a5? Yes. Possibility? And how do you... I mean, you're now frozen. Yeah, but if the king comes to b2, you bring your knight back to c3, and you have knight d1 at the end of these things. So it's weird, and I know we've used that word a lot today, but it seems like white's king can't go and approach the pawn, excuse me, the knight, to kick it. And if that's the case, then black is holding steady. And there goes the king, and now no movement there. How to do anything here? Probably take and play, you know, go for e5. Here it comes. Dude is just outplaying him. Incredible, incredible. And now, now that he's captured, this this is problematic. This is problematic. He's backing up. Knight c1 didn't just win the b pawn. Whose oh. b pawn was worse after all? Well, now it looks like he's trying to trade off and get his draw if he can. We've seen it. Oh, try to trick him with knight d3. If you take oh. on b4, is knight d3. Painful, tr just trickery everywhere. And he had to move his king. And knight there anyway. And he's just squeezing him with almost no material on the board. He's preventing him from having any moves. Here comes king e4. Why not? Just bring that king in. Knight c1 check. And then you take on b3. And this king is just walking in or winning the e3 pawn. Oh, well, this is it. No, check check king f2. And then when you take, you can take on b4. Uh, I was trying to go king d3 at the end there. But you might be right. Maybe it's like barely just holding on. And here, you know, another variation here, asking White. White's about to get in Zugzwang, however. A little bit of challenge for him as the bishop is headed to g5 with a d4 threat. Mm -hmm. And this is problematic, and it's there. We're not only is it problematic, it's on the board. It's over. Duda is owning the position. Bishop takes. Isn't d3 winning material? Yep. 
And he takes here first, but d3 still promising, but maybe there's even just bishop retreat and then d3 with tempo. He takes. Uh, he sees the yummies on the other side of the board. You can't stop those pawns from dropping. Completely devastating Fabiano right now in the bullet. All predictions looking very good. And a 12 to 8 score. Three wins in a row. The way Fabi started this this match, he won three in a row. It is Duda's turn to show his superiority in the bullet as he's won three in a row. Will it only be seven to three, Robert? Because right now it's just a one-way train running all over Fabi's tracks. Yeah, I don't think that Duda's going to look back from here, and he is just winning all these games. He's a great position in this one as well. And Fabi's in that mindset now. I don't care if I lose because I have to win, right? You, a draw is getting close to the same as a loss because they're only just under 18 minutes left as the match clock ticks down. And all right, so taking on C4 is possible here. Do it. Don't think. I mean, I just, just go for it. You have to, right? You have to. Just go. And he's just worried roll. about H4, H5. This is, not, this is not the time to hesitate or think. You've got to make moves. And this he did, he did pause. And now, by playing B4, by pausing so long to play B4, he has now shut down his own attack, and he has to restart the whole thing. And this is not good. It is a King's Indian style with F5 and maybe F4 coming. But, yeah, your King's on G8, the opponent's King's on the Queen side. So whose attack is going to be better? I don't really see an attack against this white king because of the pawn on b4, not allowing lot to open up that side of the board. But I don't see white's attack either. Mixed bag here. Right, but that's we, we wanted to get some attack for, for black. That's what the whole position was supposed to be about. And white will look to make those pawn breaks. G4 eventually will come on that side of the board. Black sometimes wants to play the move e4 when the timing is right. If you could combine it with an opening on the other side of the board as well, Robert. Wouldn't it be sweet if you had already taken the pawn on C4? Wouldn't that be nice to just have an open file directed at White's King? It certainly would. And unfortunately for Fabi, that's no longer a possibility. He loses Bishop, but the Knight is a reasonable defender. But you're right, Maurice. I'm looking at G4 ideas. How does Black attack here? Knight coming to C5 does make sense. And then perhaps there is an E4. You saw this a mile away. Well, I was trying to open up a line for the bill. Oh, he took the what? pawn. That is some... <laughs> Real I'm um, cojones <laughs> right there, boy. Oh my goodness, he took the pawn on B4 and said, I don't believe you have a strong enough attack. I'm going for it. I would never have even thought twice. Once maybe, but twice we're taking this pawn on that square. Now look at the punishment as black's pieces are just making this incursion on the dark squares. Incredible. Oh my god. Look at that... black's pieces. My goodness. It gets better and better. But wait, wait, wait. He give the so the queen's up for a couple of rooks. Rookie seven coming. This king on g eight isn't so safe either. So what's happening? I, I'm not sure, but this now queen b four and the queen showing its skill as a versatile attacker, and this is definitely winning now for white uh, for black. Excuse me, no question about it. But will he make sure he doesn't blunder somehow in this position? And he doesn't have much time. And we know what happens if Fabian was in time trouble. He's gonna scoop up all of these pawns now. The bishop on g7 on the attack, and go here. Queen c2 check. Okay, he takes this one, said. Wait, He's just taking a... all of them. Dangerous the position, though. He has not figured out. He's let the king go all the way down the board. And he missed the mate, and look at this. The valuation now says about level here, which means that white's probably going to win. White is definitely for choice now. Unbelievable what has happened here. What a turnaround. Fabi blew that game. If you don't win this game, you win none. You, if you can't win a game like this one, you, you're not winning any of the games. Unbelievable up, that he lost that game. Oh, yeah. We're going to bring up the analysis board because he missed checkmate in two moves. And that's something that you can't miss, right? When he started moving his queen away here, at this point, queen b3 check, king takes c5, queen c3 is mate. And I know it's not the first thing that may come to your mind, but you have to find the checkmates you have to on the board the for checkmate. you. You have to find the checkmate. The first check is easy. The next one you look for, that's, you have to find the checkmate. By the way, even in, even in that position, queen b6 check picks off the knight, picks off the bishop on f6. So you have yeah. to keep relentlessly attacking on every move. That's what you do in a position like this. You don't start going over the other side and messing around. No, this, this was critical. This was critical. And now he's down five and this match is done. Yeah. 
down five with just under 14 minutes. He technically has a chance, but if he couldn't win that game, it's very unlikely he's going to start winning five in a row. But Duda has done that himself against Alexander Grishuk and against Sergei Karyakin in speeches championships past. But Duda is the one with the lead, so I'm not sure we're believers in Fabi's chances. Yeah, nobody believes in it right now. And look at this night on F4. All of a sudden, uh, he's down upon his black, but you just get this feeling like black is on the, the prowl, on the attack, coming, initiative, momentum, everything on this Polish Wonderkin's side. Well, I guess he's not so young anymore, but still, he is showing his incredible ability at this time control. And look at that queen sitting on H4. Wondering what it's doing over there, Robert. It is one square. It's going to G3. At least it's safe for now. The bishop on B3 covers the weak pawns and is a nice attacking piece. So I could see this turning in Fabi's favor if he's able just to make his pieces a little bit more harmonious. But yeah, this has been all Duda. It's been a great display of bullet skill by him. And you know, Wesley So awaits the winner of this matchup. I'm not sure Wesley's happy to have to face Duda, who obviously is just on... In form, in great form. I hear you. I hear you. But I would say at the same time that as this position seems to be getting problematic for Duda as White's queen has gotten out of danger. And now he just needs to play something to deal with the potential uh, pawn com pawns coming down the board. He's up a pawn. He's got the open lines. This looks good for White. This this is the kind of game you say, this has got to be Fabi's game. He's got 27 seconds with a second increment coming at him each time. He should not blow this one. And now the question is how to finish it off. Rook D6 looks like a natural move, Robert, and then get the, the ball going down the, the field. But wh what is he doing? He's why giving he, black chances, right? Knight H3 he, check is going to come. I don't understand. I don't understand. Now, now he's def being hyper defensive, and that knight on F4 looks marvelous. I think, and and yeah. Now I'm also worried about getting mated. There's some <laughs> weird – I mean I, – I'm going to Rook tell F3. you, I'm, okay. I'm just worried now for Fabi. He's played this in such tepid fashion. I'm scared. Yeah, this I mean, he's given up his entire advantage. I mean, G3 now opening up the uh, – he might get mated. You're right. I'm, I'm saying. I'm saying he's on the edge of being mated. He's got to be careful. Wow, A6 discovered. None of them are good, I guess. E3 also E3 looks crushing. What, you can get out of this? 96 check? Wait, didn't that pick up the rook? It sure did look like Oh, the like pawn was promoting. The pawn, oh, wow, tactics. But now, what about now? Is it, oh, what's oh, going on? That. He could take that. And he can take check? that. And in time pressure, Fabi has pulled it off. Whew. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Seriously? These games are definitely not good for the heart medications. I mean, maybe no, good no. for the maybe good for the heart medications. In fact, because that was <laughs> insane. That was yeah, insane. Are you trying to say they're supporting big pharma over here? Because yeah, I'm in some pain watching these games for sure. But there were some good tactics. Bobby staying in this match with that victory, and look at him right now. He's above a minute on the clock, so he's in his element in terms of the opening preparation. And his position looks just fine. He, it's just not right about. Uh, can't even speak. It's not about right now. It's about how he progresses from here because we've seen him get plenty of good positions, some winning positions, and then in the scramble, that's when things go awry. Sometimes you play yourself into form, but then sometimes it's too late. Yeah, and we might be seeing this for Fabi that slowly he's getting there, getting there, getting there, but it may end up being too late when we're done. And this move, ninety four. Uh, Black returns the favor by putting the knight on c4. Both of them with these tricky bishops. Black's bishop is worse than white's c1 bishop. So that's going to be a problem. But black can at least brag about the pawn on a3 being a target. That yeah. pawn on a3 will be a long-term target. So black can say, I've got that guy under control. What do you have? And look at this trade on d7 for the bishop. And now a trade on f6. White has a dream of putting a queen on h6 at some point. So Black has to be very alert to this possibility, probably putting his own queen to that square. Wait a second now. Wait a second. Isn't there a bishop h6, bishop g7 idea, Robert? You know. Yeah. Straight out of Brooklyn, you know, that <laughs> weird. What? G4 and e5 were the next two moves. 
I what know. is happening this here? This is what they tell you, right? The best way to defend your king is breaking open the center. If you're going to attack <laughs> in the flank, you can't do anything. Let's go. But you're what right, Maurice. The, what the what the And here we go. As now, this is a brawl with the knight on A6. That's the one thing I'm not feeling for black right now as white is intent on blowing him up. Knight, G4, knight E5 hitting the G4 rook allows rook takes on D4. So not a sensible move, but H5, and look at the attack. Okay, yeah. knight, knight E5 is asking again to be played. And, and rook F4, he dropped the tactic. F7 check is coming. Oh Queen my. did not belong over there. Wow, Duda finds these nice ideas, Robert, when the pressure's on, and Fabi misses little tricks like that in time pressure. Duda's just an absolute boss. He loses one game. You think, well, is he going to be able to keep his composure and keep playing the great level ability he has been? The answer is clearly yes. And now there are under eight minutes. It's a five-game lead. This match effectively is over. over. Five games will do it. No question about it. The question will now be the margin. Plus five at the moment. Smarter Chess said it was going to be a four-game margin. It's plus five at the moment. So close indeed. And all he needs is a few draws does do to for this to be completely over, over, not good for Fabi fans at all. And this game, no exception to that. Black is up a pawn. White has, you know, quality rook on D1, bishop on B6. Great. But you're down a pawn as we're entering towards a pure ending. And I mean, Duda is just a monster. A lot of money at stake, of course, that Duda is going to take the lion's share, the $2,000 for being the winner, plus the win percentage. Uh, it's all going his way. He should be a very happy, what's he, 21, 22? He's a youngster in a good payday. Indeed. And look at this evil, two connected passers, white, desperate right here. You, you know when you're losing badly, Robert? We've all been there. And whatever you do, it feels like fluff. Your opponent just swatting your moves like flies. Like, get out of here. That's nothing. I'm going to stop that. I'm going to take this. I'm going to own you. And now he's taking yet another pawn. Fabi made it a vain attempt with G4. And it just, as strong as Fabi is, you feel weak. You feel helpless as your opponent just finds every move. And look at this trick. Knight D7 instantly. You couldn't take on B7. I mean, he's showing off right now. Mm -hmm. Rook D7 looking for more trade. Can't take his G5. I mean, the guy oh, is just. Come amazing. on, man. On every move, he's finding this. It's Too ridiculous. Good. Ridiculous skill and just winning with style and ease and composure and flow up six right now. You know, Maurice, we started off this match. Fabi was up three nothing, right? Yep. We're like, dang, like this is going potentially be a lopsided affair in Fabi's favor. And then something started clicking for Duda. And it's just a totally different match from the start of the five minute. You know, when it was four to one Fabi, ever since it's been all Jan Kristoff. And he looks like he's smiling right now, laughing, enjoying this. Fabi's leaning back. Fabi's no longer interested. Yeah, he's no he's... longer interested. He knows the match is over. He's down six. Uh, he got punished, pummeled into submission. And he's leaning back. He's, he's, he can't bring himself to come up to the screen and really focus. He's just making moves now because he just wants it to be over. And, well, fortunately for him, there's only five minutes remaining. But, yeah, it must be frustrating for Fabi because year after year, he takes part in the speech as championship. And, well, it's you know, hard for him. He lost to Levon Aronian, I think it was like 20 to 5 or 21 to 5, something ridiculous uh, for a player of Fabiano's caliber. But something about these blitz and eventually the bullet portion, they don't go his way. He needs to continue working on that. You know, it's interesting because I think Fabi's probably relieved to be gone. Like just... <laughs> You know, okay, okay, he did not want to lose. Let's be, let's be fair. But Fabi is trying to become the world chess champion. Let, th there's no other ambition he has. He's trying to become the world chess champion. The way he's going to do that is going to be to win candidate match again, matches or candidate tournament again, and face the best player in the world and beat him. And this one minute is not his thing. He's right. not going to sit around and become a maestro at bullet chess. He's just not. He's not going to spend hours and hours and days and days and weeks and weeks so that at one day he can say, hey, guys, I'm good at bullet now. That's just not him. He's not going to do that. He'll leave the bullet specialist 
he'll leave bullet chest to the bullet specialist. He'll try to do well when the time comes, but he's not going to spend all his time trying to do this. And he'll compete in these events. He, you know, now he's really in a lot of trouble again in this position. But, the, you know, frankly, he's just, this is not what he's about. Yeah, no, I think you summed it up very well, that his focus is very clear. Uh, he wants to do well when he's invited and plays in these events, but he's not going to prioritize these speech chess events over the world championship that he wants to play in once more. So I'm completely with you, Maurice. His position, again, not looking very good, but the match already is pretty much done. Rook G3 looks possible. Oh, there's Queen C1 check to be careful about, but Rook G3 was trying to distract the Rook. Instead, he goes for the D pawn, trying to kick this knight away, maybe Bishop D7 and winning the D4 pawn. But you're right. I'm with you, Maurice. Um, Fabi has a focus, and that's the candidate tournament, which who knows when that will even take place at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the meantime, people are getting good money for playing in these kind of events. And unfortunately uh, for, for Fabi, He's not going to get the top dollar unless he starts winning some of these online events. And he's watching other players who are getting it done ahead of him uh, as he just he's not able to keep up as well. He did have a great showing in clutch chess. Fantastic showing. Fantastic match against Magnus. Won some money there. But if he's going to win the top, top dollar, he's got to be able to win some of these online events. And it's just not, again, not his priority. Yeah, and Magnus himself, he had that interview that Jonathan Tisdale uh, published on Chess Life Online, I saw. And Magnus said that, okay, you know, Fabi still has a chance at the candidates. He's down one point at the halfway mark. Ooh, we got made it in that one. Yeah, I, I, honestly, I've, you know, he's stopped kind of looking at how bad it's been for him. But Magnus said that his toughest challenge by far is Fabiano Caruana. So that speaks volumes. Uh, most people in the know in the chess world see the ratings Fabian is number two for a long time, and it's pretty distant between him and Magnus, but also between him and number three. So that's the toughest competitor for Magnus in classical chess, which is you know, the highest quality of, of games. So you're right. Fabi just, you know, he's not going to focus on the speeches, but he has been better in rapid, but that will not translate into bullet success. Agreed. Agreed. I think this is his worst time control without any doubt about it. Rapid chess, and as I mentioned, clutch chess, he did well. Because rapid chess, he's been better, without yes. any question. But when you start going, not just for blitz, but you start going to bullet, that's just not his thing. And he's not, he's not inter interested in training for this, excuse me, and he's not interested in, in overall, even if he did well. Okay, I did well. No, of course he wants to do well. But it's not the proof. The proof in the pudding for him is classical chess and becoming world champion. Yeah. Indeed, and all credit to young Chris Abduda, who has been an absolute monster today. He started off on the absolute terrible foot. It's like he wasn't even awake yet. But then something inside of him really woke up, and he started roaring. And Fabiano has been on the back foot ever since. So Duda in this final game here, unless it ends quickly. We have 35 seconds of counting down. This should be the last game, and he's going to win this match. And it's going to look very one-sided, but it's all been decided in the bullet. We see here it's 7-1. to one. Currently, in bullet, in Duda's favor, he entered up one point. Now it's a seven-point lead. By the way, if we just do a little math, the match, as you mentioned, three-zero to start. Yes. Yes. Since then, it's been sixteen to six is mm -hmm. the score. Sixteen-six. That is a comeback, and more than a comeback, a straight beat down. Once he got his rhythm, sixteen-six to turn things around. What a roll, what a run, and he just just pummeled Fabi into submission, and especially in the bullet. That was the difference maker. The bullet yeah. was indeed the difference maker because there, were only a point there was only a point separating them after the five-minute portion and the three-minute portion. It was well, that, point that's separating. huge credit to uh, Duda because he knew he was the favorite in bullet, and the fact that he was able to come back from that early deficit and just keep the match not just close but in a lead for him – Right, that speaks volumes about his talent. And this final game here, I mean, look at this king on e4. It's like a checkmated, it feels like. Okay, that's yeah, nice for it won't get mated, but. This is uh, not not going well for Fabi, and he's just trying. It doesn't matter. It'd be nice to win the last game, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. One of those things. It's nice to win the last game. But sharks like Duda, they try to win everything, and they don't want to give him anything whatsoever as Duda is trying to blitz through these next moves. And maybe one day hit at this king, but it looks as though it's all about the time oh. to be down. 
Look at that. Oh, but he he had a trick back because the Brooklyn C two was under attack, but there should be some winning discoveries. Okay, where's oh, the mate? Looking bad. It's looking bad. The mate is coming. Where is it though? Okay. Look Rook at three ninety six. Gang oh, up on the on the king, and finally a mate to finish it off. And Duda smiling there, happy as he's won the match seventeen to nine, a seventeen to six run. After going down three zero. Kudos, he definitely dominated the match. And we can say Smarter Chess kind of had it right, but not as bad as the final result actually was. I think it was 8-1 in the blip, in the bullet. It was indeed. So Smart Chess. That's exactly where the predictions were trending, and it was worse than uh, even predicted. Yeah, so I have to give our, a nod to Smart Chess. Accurate once again, foiled my thoughts, and I just I'll never get over it, but you know, really just big props to JKD who scores a monster victory, sends a message to the rest of the field and he'll have Wesley. So up next, Wesley did defeat him soundly in a prior speech as championship, but right now it's a new young Christoph Duda, some renewed confidence, but we'll hear from the players in a few. So please enjoy the final primetime SmackDown video. You know, it's the last one. Clearly Danya did some work against me. Sorry for everyone who roots for me. I don't know why you do that. But we're going to take our final break. We'll bring the players in for the call, and we'll interview them to conclude the Speed Chess Championship opening round match. I came into this match thinking I was going to lose, and, you know, it is all going according to that plan. But that's not the plan we want to see happen today. It so, is precisely the plan that we want to see. All right, all right, all right. I'm going to take a breath. I'm going to take a breath. Me too. Uh, preparing for you this seem so in... chill right now i always am can you put a photo of me on your wall please like i see photos of other people there and right i feel well, like th that's my family with robert yeah well, we so, spent enough time I'm together good. so yeah oh you're saying you're family oh yeah you know, well we... maybe maybe after 10 games you'll be family again. <laughs> <laughs> that's sadly probably the case so let, let's just leave me alone for a second down here Ooh, i have to stay with the knight to oh, oh. I thought you'd fall for it you come on man it. come on man, man. Uh, come on man i have no i, I don't miss that stuff <laughs> this doesn't feel very good for me I'm gonna no it doesn't uh, i'm gonna play this positionally just get the knight back dude why are you such a bully today I'm, I'm feeling good. I've done nothing but be a friend to you. Oh. That, that feels factual. We might have to reconsider our, our record then. Wait, I think my position's not quite as... Oh. Uh, look, yeah, do it. Come on. Come on, man. Just leave me alone. <laughs> Let's see it. Actually, no, I don't like it. <laughs> okay. Yep. <laughs> no, Give me I that. Think I missed, you think I missed that? Yeah, I do. Give no, I that. didn't. I saw that all the way. All right, all right. Uh, now what do I do? All right, tank Let's ready. Go back. No, this is exactly. These are the positions I live for, Robert. You don't. Yeah, understand. sadly that's true, and I don't have much time. So let's just run my keyboard. Let's take this. Oh shoot! Forgot that. Funny one. thing is, okay, takes, and let's find the most clinical. Thing. Yeah, I think just, it's this. You're such a rookie one. Okay. <laughs> At least you didn't lose your queen. You have that as solace. You know, you are just getting a big head, and I don't like it. I'm getting a, a massive head. I, I like, always have. I, I've always had one. I like the I mean, diamond. That was just a, a nice kid. Oh no! I thought I had That's you for me. a second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. So, my technique here is atrocious as usual, but I was so excited. I hope you understand that. Oh crap! That is. I didn't know, recognize the, the the gravity of that threat for a second there. Can you just leave me alone and not checkmate me? <laughs> nope. Danya, okay, you're too good, sure. man. You're too good. But you know what? You needed something positive in your life, so that's why I agreed to play you, okay? Robert Hess already is a positive. You, you have to understand, but... I play very little bullet, right? And so I'm just here to make sure that you are a happy person. I see. I see. That explains, that really explains everything, Robert. I mean, I before this, I, I didn't know what your intentions and motivations were, but now I do. But on a serious note, can I, my photo go up on your wall? That would make me... Absolutely, I'd be I'd be honored. I, you'd be honored to have my photo on your wall. Yes. See, this is the type of trash. That's just that's what I, I say to people. Yeah. To, just to make them feel good. Exactly. You are just bullying me after you just destroyed me on the chest. Well, it's like that um, most interesting man in the world in those Dos Equis commercials. He once had an awkward moment just to see how it feels. So.
And we are joined by the players after what was a very exhilarating match. Jan Christoph Duda, congratulations. And I have to ask, after you were down 3 nothing, how were you able to right the ship and turn the match around and score a decisive victory? Yeah, I knew that the beginning of the match might, might be very difficult for me. I didn't expect to zero out of three, of course, but uh, yeah, usually I start with losing, I think, in these ma matches. So, yeah, but I mean, it's uh, okay. I played quite badly in, in that game, so you see, but yeah, afterwards, I, I was like, kind of, you know, okay, getting into the match because. Yeah, so I think at the beginning, I'm often like not playing very well. Yeah, Bobby, this match was yours at the beginning. It looked very powerful for you. You must have been disappointed when it started turning around. Can you can you pinpoint anywhere in the match that you felt like you let this slip away? Um, well, I had a feeling that the bullet would be would be really tough for me. I didn't expect it to go as badly as it did, but I, I had a feeling that I would be a pretty serious underdog in bullet. So I was hoping to to make a mark in uh, in the first two segments. And and yeah, it was starting out well, but um, uh, yeah, I guess that Jan you know, Christoph was still not fully adjusted at the start, and then he started to, to get his form. And uh, I probably just shouldn't have been playing the French so much. It worked out at the start, but then I was getting these strate strategically awful positions and. It, uh, and basically it was just, it was a complete disaster around that point. Um, I also lost this really, really unnecessary game the, uh, when Jan Christoph played, uh, took on F4 and I lost him like 10 moves with white. And that was, so yeah, that, that was, that was a big disappointment around that moment. Um, then later it seemed like it kind of equalized after in, in the three minute portion, it was pretty, pretty balanced. Um, but yeah, it was, I, I didn't really have a chance to, at the end. Yeah, and Fabi, I was going to make a joke if you were playing the French just to get under my skin, knowing my feelings about the opening. But, um, you know, you knew the bullet probably was going to quite heavily favor Jan Kristoff. Were you working on bullet behind the scenes or was that something that you just said, I'm, I'm not going to be able to get better in time for this match to be able to you know, equalize the the score with him in the time control? No, I, I, I wasn't playing any bullet. I also wasn't playing any blitz before. I didn't really... Um, I don't know. I, I, you know, I've sort of been on vacation here, and I haven't really wanted to, to play online chess too much before this match. Uh, and okay, it's it seems like. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think that I'm going to improve massively by playing a few bullet games before the match. You know, um, it's it's sort of like I, I'm just panicking when I'm down to seconds, and this is not a thing that you can you can really correct in in a day or two. Jan Christoph, grazie. Congratulations. You play Bullet so well. What is the key to your style, to this ability? Do you live play, when you were growing up playing Bullet all the time? Uh, did I play Bullet well? I mean, I thought I was like extremely lucky today in the Bullet because I was okay winning games either equal or worse for me, or maybe even lost sometimes. So, yeah, I wasn't uh, actually, I mean, I'm not very... With, uh, with the way I play bullet, obviously the score is too high. Like, yeah, as I said, I was like extremely lucky all the time, and um, yeah, I've been I've been playing a lot actually before this match, a lot of bullets. So yeah, I guess I I was just you know like more comfortable uh, on the instrument. Well, young Christoph, do you oh, think so that? playing in the Invitational helped you because you got to play very strong opponents like Karyakin, Jeffrey Jean, Grishuk, and uh, Min Lee. So do you think that helped you in preparation for this match? Yeah, obviously. I mean, you know, it's never enough <laughs> of bullet. And, well, I think that, you know, to be in good shape, one can, like, have to play all the time because otherwise you are just too slow. And, yeah, but as said, I mean, that was extremely lucky today, and definitely um, this score was too high. I think you're knocking yourself. We saw some brilliant games being played and brilliant instincts at the end of that one as well. Fabi, I made this point that bullet may not be your thing, and it's not going to be your thing. You have big aspirations become becoming the best player in the world, becoming world champion. Is that fair to say that 
you you want to play and want to do well, but you're you're probably not going to train a lot for bullet chess specifically as you have higher aspirations. Well, I, I enjoy blitz and rapid and uh, and I you know I want to do well. Um, I mean, also, I, of course, I want to do well in all events I play in. Um, but bullet is not something that I've ever had much much interest in. Um, it's it's not really my thing. Um, but yeah, in blitz and rapid. Uh, I mean, I, I, I do enjoy playing quite a lot and and I do want to have good results. Um, uh, yeah, I, I don't think that I'm going to be best bullet player <laughs> at any time. Totally fair. And well, Jan Christoph will end the interview with you. Um, you play Wesley So next. And in a previous match against Wesley So, he was able to beat you and seemed to ha have a good a performance against you. Do you think that things have changed in the last couple of years? Do you feel ready for the challenge of facing Wesley next? Well, obviously, Wesley is a very difficult opponent uh, for everyone, especially when he's confident. confident. Um, yeah, usually, you know, um, I either win a miniature game against Wesley or I or just suffer in every game. So it's like, if I don't win 25 moves, then it's, you know, going to be <laughs> a difficult game. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, he's very strong, and he, I think he was, I mean, reaching final all the time, yeah, in every year, so, yeah, but I mean, okay, I, okay, everyone is difficult in this tournament, so, yeah, and I'm happy to have a chance to do the revenge. For sure. Well, thank you both for joining us after the match. I know it was a long affair. Um, Jan Christoph, congratulations once again. And Fabi, sorry it didn't go your way, but it's always a pleasure to watch your games. Thank, Thank you. you, guys. Thanks. And not only is Jan Christoph due to the winner of today's match, we have several winners of some cash prizes. They guessed the move correctly. We have Fidi Master Yavrukort, 40. That's a repeat customer, Maurice, winning the $75 cash, I believe, twice in a row now. That's nice, man. You sit and hang out and watch some chess, get some moves, and get 75 bucks in your pocket. Hey, that that's that sounds good. Can you imagine if you could watch other sports and do that? Well, I mean, even better is winning a diamond membership. And look at that username, Beer Chugger. Multitasking at its finest, right? <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> well, congrats to everybody who hung in there, guessed those moves, and took home a little cash and some membership as well. For sure. And you'll have an opportunity to continue guessing the move tomorrow because Vladislav Artemyev takes on Anish Giri in our last first round matchup to decide the final quarter finalist. And we'll bring our smarter chess predictions up. That match takes place tomorrow, 9 a.m. Pacific. Look at this. We have Artemyev, the 61% favorite, 15 and a half, 13 and a half predicted final score. And that is decided, no surprises here, in the bullet segment. What do you think about that, Maurice? Seems fair. Seems fair. Anish Giri is not known for his blitz prowess or hyper blitz, hyper bullet prowess. Obviously one of the best players in the world. No question about it. But Artemiev and these these young guns, super young guns. Anish is, is not one of the, the older guys. I mean, it, it's not like he's getting the cane out yet. But these these young, young guns, they just seem like they grow up on bullets and bullet and blitz and Anything that's quick, the minds work a whole different way. So I think the slight edge to Artemiev makes sense, but don't count Anish out of this match. And I love Artemiev's photo, by the way. Everybody else is happy and smiling. He's just looking, like, through you. And he's ready to grab your soul through your chest Gangster. and then add it to his collection. He's, yeah. he's the guy you hire uh, to, to, do, to play the assassin in the, in the <laughs> Jason Bourne movies. You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> Like this guy's gonna walk over and, and say, "Okay, you know, you know what time it is, right?" You say, "Okay, it's over, it's over now," and he plays <laughs> like it too. He certainly does, Maurice. And uh, I've had a great day here with you. It was a fun match. Of course, the final score went in one direction all the way for young Chris Abduda, but it was neck and neck before the bullet portion. So, Maurice, any kind of final thoughts on what was another excellent speeches championship match? Indeed, the first part of the match. Maybe even the, I would say the first two thirds of the match was so competitive, was so interesting. And it started out with Fabi needing the first three wins that it turns out to just keep it competitive. But in the end, the part of the, the competition where we as commentators 
We really want to be on the edges of our seats and biting our fingernails. What's going to happen? Who's going to win? It's so close. Maybe there'll be a tie break. We didn't get to see that because of the spectacular play by Duda at the end to show that, hey, Bullet is his thing. Uh, we'll see. The matches are going to get more and more interesting as the winners start to move up in these brackets, and it's going to be amazing. If it's anything like the beginning of this match was, like future matches I think will be, we're in for a treat in the rest of the Speech as Championship. We certainly are, and we heard it from Jan Christoph Duda himself. He'll move on to Wesley So, who's such a solid and spectacular player that he's like, well, I, it's an honor to play anybody. I'm thrilled to move on. We'll see how it goes. And with that, I just want to thank everybody behind the scenes doing all this work, our production team, our graphic designers, and our moderators, of course, everybody who's tuned in throughout the show, who's watching and supporting. And Maurice, I want to thank you. You always make it so fun because your energy, it's so authentic. I know how much you love chess. I'm the same way. And you know we go back, but it's fun every single time. It's a new experience. So thank you so much, Barney. Always fun. Always fun. Looking forward to the next time. Absolutely. See everybody. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Uh-oh. I'm not sure here if comes. anybody's winning here. Rook C8 is... The king is on 8-6. <laughs> what? Rook C8. What? King, come on now. This is not real. No way you're surviving this position. Queen C7, a trade. I think they're just blitzing now. They're not sure what's happening at all. What's this? G4? Oh my gosh, here comes the king. This is but dude's game. G4 king. is a bad move. G4 was definitely a bad move. It did... Not it was not correct, but you know what? Right around now, it doesn't matter what correct is 